right, John. All right, Archer. All right, Internet. It's time for another Rage. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. It's time to round up another Rage Slick podcast here on the RageSlick.com. I'm Jeff, the founder of Rage Select. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm John. You got anything? No, you didn't want yeah. to do cowboy no. voices with me today? No, no, no I'm okay. good. <laughs> well, hello, everybody, and welcome. I feel, uh, you know, it's funny, John. I feel like I'm... Like, I'm alive again. Like, for yeah, the last two yeah. weeks, I've been real... Uh, you know, it's weird, because for the last two you, weeks... You've looked like a, a, a zombie. I Well, I've... Okay, so I've, I've, I have had a lot of Robitussin. Yeah? Um, and I was coughing. You know, I couldn't get through and an entire video. And then the, there was the Sunday that I came here and thought you were dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was nice. That was, that was pretty awesome. Yeah, folks. Uh, yeah, like, I took some Robitussin PM, and, uh, like, I set my alarm for eight hours, and then, like, I got a phone call, and I was like, oh, shit, it's three o'clock? Like, what the shit, man? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that was not the best, uh, that was not my, my finest uh, hour of Sunday streaming or in day. the world. <laughs> or day, yes. It was actually fucked up, because then it was, like, later in the evening, I was like, oh, man, I feel great now. Yeah. But, see, it's crazy, because for the last two weeks... I've been, you know, I've been taking cough medicine to go to bed. My car's broken. Oh, yeah. So I think that I might be hitting the other side of, like, I haven't had a beer in, like, two weeks. Like, that's been oh. the thing. And I've been, like, I've been wanting to stop, but because I'm a filthy, horrible human being, like, I... All true. Um, I wasn't stopping. I'd be like, I'll start stopping tomorrow. It's dollar fifty Lone Star night. Um I don't know. But, yeah, it's great to not be coughing anymore. Yeah. It's great. I wish I had a car. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, yeah. Well, that, the, it soon. That would be nice. That would be nice. But that's enough because it's time for the Rage Select Podcast. This might as well be called E3 Day yeah. Zero. I, I love how, how like, if someone someone somewhere went, you know what? E3 is going to be big. It's going to have a lot of news. Yeah. Why don't we announce our thing before E3? Mm-hmm. Before you know, so that we're not you know lost in the hubbub, yep. and then it turns out every fucking company in existence had that same like, idea. Oh shit! Did they do that? Okay, launch it, launch it. Like they're all sitting around in their in their in their Apollo thir- uh, eighteen vests or thirteen vests or whatever in the command center. They're like, nah, publish the trailers. They hit the big red button and publish. Oh the trailers. shit! Someone from GameStop released pictures of our promotional material. Can't Put it. all the trailers out. Yep. So we have we have a shitload of trailers to talk about, and the most sad thing about about this is by the time this podcast goes up, there's going to be at least double, if not triple, this number of trailers. Hell, by Sunday when this goes up, we'll be post Bethesda E3 conference, yeah. right? Um, so, yeah, we're not going to fuck around too much here at the beginning. Outside, I got two quick points and then a third quick thing to go over uh, before we run into this. So, And then a sixth and thing. Four more things after that and then just a quick two sub, sub footnotes and then it'll be fine. Um, and then a prefix. Yes. First up, but the day that we're recording this, John, I didn't realize this until today, that uh, that, uh, that their Voltron comes out tomorrow. Oh, the shit. Netflix Voltron yeah. publishes tomorrow. Are you... I've talked at enormous links with Matt Frank about yes. this. But I don't think I've actually had a conversation with you about it. I'm excited for it. Yeah? You look yeah. forward to it? Yeah, I used to love Voltron. Yeah, me too. I had the toys. It was awesome. Yeah. Had all five lines. It, you know, formed together, become a bigger lion. How- was it the one that was like two feet yeah, tall or whatever? Yeah, two feet tall. I mean, it was like, it was like you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no. It was, yeah. it was the average size. One. I, I was a kid, so my yeah. hands were much smaller. Yeah, than but they're was, fucking awesome. Actually, my hands were the same size when I was a kid. It was just big clown hands. Uh but yeah, no, it looks uh, it looks pretty pretty hype. It's definitely um, some changes being made, but I'm okay with that. I just, I don't fucking care. I'm so over. I'm so over it. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Like I think tomorrow I've got like just a couple videos to knock out. I'm actually really like ahead of the game uh, this week. Yeah. So I'm hoping that tomorrow I can just sit down and binge watch Voltron. I don't know though. when I'm going to be able to binge watch it because uh, binge watch it because uh, right after work I'm trying to uh, a creator who a comic book creator is in town uh-huh. uh, doing a signing that I really want to. The Jim Lee. Uh, uh, no, it's Brian Michael Bendis. The Todd McFarlane. Oh, it's Brian. Oh, I actually yeah. know who that is. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, he's uh, I, th- this man uh, not to go off on a tangent or anything but i will say this uh, this away. man is a is indirectly responsible for me being where i am today oh really yes his bendis me- brian michael bendis message board uh-huh. that he created oh for, yeah like i used to hang out on that all the fucking time mm-hmm. and i got so many i mean it's the reason i do a podcast it's the reason i got into a podcasting it's the reason you know it i it's the reason i got into like you know know so many comic book creators to help facilitate that podcast okay it's it's just everything that 
ever got me to this point in my life, even yeah. moving to Austin, mm-hmm. was indirectly respo- responsible because of that message board. So would you say that Brian Michael Bendis is your Hideo Kojima? He might be, yeah. Holy shit. I'd... I don't even like everything he does <laughs> in comedy. Like, I like a lot of his stuff, but I don't like everything he does. Like, yeah. I think some books are not that great. Yeah. Um, but he's such a, he said, I mean, I just remember from back in the 90s, he's such a workhorse, though. Yeah, That's the he thing is. is he's, Dude just cranks it like, yeah. uh, you know, I really liked his run on Ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, that was him, right? Yeah, no, uh, that was only him. That was only him, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. he's the only one who's ever done Ultimate Spider-Man. And then that first arc of uh, the Ultimates, um, which I know that some people don't like Asshole Captain America. No, Wasn't he that? didn't do. No, that was Mark Millar. Uh, you sure? Yeah. I thought that was the second in no, moving Ma- forward. Both of the, really? both, the first two were Mark oh, Millar. Okay, all right, fine. Um uh, yeah. Anyway, I mean, I've I've I remember some of his stuff from back then. Did he do um, um, Daredevil? No. What was the one about Sleeper? No, that was Brubaker. Brew Ed Brubaker. God, I get I get those two confused all the time. Yeah. Anyway. Well, Brubaker's also a really cool dude. Yeah. And, and you know, I just remember it was you know you would see uh, you would see his name on like half the comics of the comic book store. Yeah. No. A certain it's, time uh, <laughs> you know it sucks because uh, he's his his independently created uh, powers is one of my favorite comics. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. And it sucks as a TV show. Um, it's a fucking <laughs> terrible Sony TV show. Um, I haven't watched it. Is it really I, that bad? The, the first se- I had to I couldn't finish it. Like I've watched like the first like four or five episodes uh-huh. and i only got that far because i was like i like power so much right i fucking they're fucking it up they, okay well it's like they turn these characters who were maybe asshole characters but had personality to them that you at least liked yeah and then they made them all unlikable characters yeah just completely the worst unlikable characters they turn the main character into a fucking powers junkie drug addict wishing you know pissed off that he lost his abilities um it's just it doesn't sound good. No, it was Sounds like I, I the fact that I got a second season, it makes me want to try to go back and power through all of it. And ah, the second I see what season you did there and, and powers through all of it. No, with but, powers booth. No no, 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 no. And then try to give the second season a chance. But I, I, I don't know if I can do it. OK, uh, but uh, I'm a big fan. He's in town for a signing and uh, you gonna go, you know. you gonna go shake his hand. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's his, kind of it's the first time I've ever been in a city where he has been at the same time. Okay, um, and have had an opportunity to be able to meet him. So okay. that's a big thing. Cool. Uh, well, speaking of comic books, the only other thing that I wanted to go over is I got a chance to see that Age of Apocalypse uh, X Men movie. Yeah, uh, that's, what, that's it's just X Men right? Apocalypse. X Men Apocalypse. Sorry, Age of Apocalypse was the. That was the weird. That was the else cr- worlds. Yeah. Well, sort of, yeah. The but, where Blink came from, right? Yeah, it's the and... world where if Charles Xavier had been killed. Okay, um, yeah. So I got a chance to see that um, by his son from the future. Movie's kind of a mess. Um, yeah. I think that it's just too many, too many X Men. Um, also, I, I I've said this before. You're gonna hear me, hear me say it like four times this week because I always there's always one thing that I'm it. always like hung up on every week. I don't think Apocalypse is a good villain for a movie. Because he's a very nebulous villain with a kind of infinite power set that is ill-defined with strange goals. Um, so I just don't think that he makes for the best comic book villain. Like, it's good when you have a villain who has a... a I, he's not really very relatable in the movie, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but like... He just wants to do the same thing that, like, everybody in the X-Men wants to do. It's like, I'm going to blow up the world, and then only the mutants will be left. And it's like, great. You mean, like, Magneto and uh, fucking everybody? Well, there is a bit of a difference. Magneto wants to end humanity so that only mutants are left, and then that's it. That's, That's the end goal for Magneto. Apocalypse wants to do that and then rule over all of mutant kind. I don't, it's, you know, the the difference is negligible to the point where I think Apocalypse works way better, or I thought that he worked way better in the comics when you didn't know that much about him. Once they started actually fleshing out who he was, where he was from, and all that stuff. And the fact that he's the first mutant. Yeah, I, I feel like he got a lot less interesting than when he was just this shadowy figure that was actually manipulating other mutants to do stuff, to kind of fuck, because he showed up in X-Factor originally yeah. to yeah, fuck that, with. Yeah, that's where he first appeared. Fuck with the, the original team. Yeah. Uh, and I liked him better like that than I liked him in this movie. Plus, I feel like every like all of the non X Men mutants, people making a big deal about like Jubilee getting cut bunch of her entirely stuff getting from cut. the movie. Uh, she's still in there a little bit, but like nobody gets a really good like. I, I was just thinking back to when I saw Civil War and how 
Like, everybody in Civil War had their little, like, mini story arc, right? Like, you know, Spider-Man has a little mini story arc. Black Panther has a little mini story arc. Even, you know, Winter Soldier had a little thing of his own. Even the bad guy, you know, they had their own thing. Where it's just like, in Age of Apocalypse, Psylocke just shows up, and then she's henches for Apocalypse. And then she just kind of runs away at the end. And it's like, great. And I and then I started thinking about it, and as much as I feel like Apocalypse isn't a good mutant to put into a movie because he's too weird and complicated, I started thinking, Psylocke is way too complicated for a movie because, you know, she's fucking Captain Britain's sister, and then she becomes a ninja, and her powers change. She's got the fucking... He's also she, telepathically body swapping. Yeah, and- there's laser swords, and there's a whole, like, when... Quanon becomes her own thing, and then Betsy Braddock comes back or whatever. I mean, like, it's so comic book convoluted. That's why you just say she's a fucking ninja with a with a laser sword. Yeah, but the thing is that that's not like it's this, this is the this is one of the few times where my uh, it, it, it didn't really bother me all that much. But it's like, but it's not a laser sword. It's not. It's her. It's it's a, <laughs> it's a psychic spear. Yeah, it's a psychic. Yeah, it's you a don't psychic. like cut stuff with it. You plunge it into somebody's brain and fry them. You know, fry their their brains out. Like yeah, true. In the comic, it's like she. You know, at the beginning, she just had that thing. It was like a triangle came out of her hand of pink energy and yeah. it was like this is all my psychic power and i'm gonna plunge it in yeah. and it's gonna fry your brain right yeah. and it made her more powerful than everybody than you know a lot of the just like regular telepaths because she get into this like focused attack this movie it's just laser swords she just yeah. has little fucking laser swords and i can't really fault them for that because the movie already has like three telepaths in it and the last thing they would need would be a whole other telepath for no reason. God knows. Storm kind of gets boned a little bit. I mean, all of the mutants that hang out with Apocalypse, Angel, I mean, they have teeny tiny little story arcs, but not a lot. And those are pretty interesting characters in the comics that if you just spend a little bit of time, like, you know, working with them instead of just you're an action prop. That's what that's the thing about uh, uh, some of the new X-Men movies that kind of gets to me is that it felt like. The characters were just there to have somebody with a big pink laser sword or somebody with metal wings or somebody that has lightning so that we could make that special effect when we have our mutant fight at the end of the movie. I'm going to say this. uh, Both uh, Days of Future Past and... uh, First Class. uh, No, no. First Class didn't feel this way. I feel feel like Days of Future Past also uh, felt like uh, action movie props. Like They didn't feel like characters. They felt like, well, this is a prop. Like I actually felt like uh, that the first movie, First Class, actually did really good at like fleshing out the characters me too me too yeah they spent Um, some time with them you know know. that was um oh fuck what was his name the Uh, guy that directed it i don't remember Uh, he's the guy that did layer cake and uh Uh, uh, nope i'm not going to be able to tell you the answer to that uh but yeah i i just did uh let's see matthew vaughn matthew vaughn thank you Uh, um yeah matthew vaughn did really good with that movie and then you know, and then uh, fucking what's his name came back and kind of made it just like the original movies, where instead of actually having, with the exception of the first movie he did, made it all it Brian Singer, of, whatever. Yeah, yeah, action action set pieces. Uh, yeah, it's like he made one movie where characters were actually had some character development, some story. Sure. And then every movie after that was just like ah, action set. Piece. I mean, you know, the, as much as I don't like the fact that the that that franchise is all about Wolverine, at least in Days of Future Past, like we've already had like what four or five movies at that point with yeah. Wolverine in them. So it's like, okay, I know Wolverine, right? But like I don't know Psylocke and Angel, right? Yeah. Like even Nightcrawler in he was in two, right? Got kind yeah. of a, a raw deal of just like, oh, he looks crazy. And it's like, but there's more there's more to him than that than just he looks like a, a fucking crazy demon man. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean like I think that there were some people was it that one where there were people who were like, this is the new Battlefield Earth and I'm like, it's not that bad. Like it's I not... thought that was I thought that was well, the Warcraft movie. Oh, that's Warcraft. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's that's I haven't seen that one yet, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go watch it. You don't try to stop me, John. I'm not gonna try to stop you. <laughs> but anyway, it wasn't the worst movie I've ever seen, but it was more just like I think that when I watched Civil War and I saw this movie that had all of these characters and I felt like they all got a good shake, like they all got some characterization and some little arcs and stuff. Yeah. That it made uh, Apocalypse, uh, X-Men Apocalypse look dumb because it was more like the characters it's just like we said, they're just pawns to set up the next big CGI battle where yeah. you I don't know, uh, I actually cared a lot about the char- individual characters in Civil War and in X-Men Apocalypse it was just like eh, yeah, eh, eh, eh. anyway um, well that's the new business 
it's time for the time for the trailers. Do you have anything else? No, no, anything that else was, uh, that up? Was, no, no, yeah. nothing. All right. Uh, yeah. So E3 is upon us, even though it's not till. Well, as well, of you listening to this, it's it it is upon us. It is upon uh, for, us for us today. It like doesn't start for another like four days, three days, three days. Well, okay, fine. Now, in fact, I think Nintendo's doing some kind of streamy thing on Saturday. So I don't think so. so. I think no, 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 every, no everybody's doing something on Sunday. There's some Saturday like Activision or EA thing that's happening. Uh, I don't. Well, know. I know EA or Activision or both are doing like the, no EA. No EA is not at E3. They're doing their own side thing on that Saturday. Oh, okay. Like it's like for fans to come out and motherfucker, motherfucker. If I if I remember correctly, I, it's something. One of the big companies is not actually a couple of it the big companies. It just keeps are. oozing. I get the I get the feeling. Anyway, oh, oh, you know what? Let's come back to that. We got to get started on these trailers, or else we're going to be here for goddamn ever. But I am so excited. Yeah. Because the first trailer that I saw this week, the one that seemed to me to kick all this bullshit off. It was. Was the trailer for Agents of Mayhem. And this is the new, this is the new one from Volition, the Saints Row team. And this trailer is great. Um, yeah, no, it's a great trailer. Uh, it starts out, it's like real kind of like B-movie cheesy of this big kind of like, it looks like a cartoon villain coming down. Like this guy, he's got a sphere that makes all this unlimited energy. And then like this fucking, he looks like. His actually, name is Dr. Babylon. He looks like a, he looks like a, like a Borderlands villain almost, right? Yeah. Um, comes down, he's stealing this giant sphere. And then fucking like this lady comes in with her. She's a, she's a space pirate or a sky pirate or something. She's got herself a little uh, a little drone that she's flying around with, and just starts blasting on stuff, um, and that's great. That was that you know that was pretty good. Fortune Sky Pirate, uh, but after that happens, <laughs> we have what might be my new most favorite line in all of video games when these drones are attacking Fortune and this 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 giant fucking wailing Ahab spear comes out of nowhere. And this guy just says, Ahoy, motherfucker! <laughs> and it's, um, what's the name? What's this guy's name? Oh, you're about to see it. Um, Hardtack, uh, who's, yeah, just this, like, big. It's so weird because the first two of these characters both have this kind of, like, nautical yeah. theme to them. Um, and then we've got we got a third guy that comes in. This is basically Johnny Cage. He's no, it feels like it's Nolan North. It feels like yeah, yeah, like Johnny Cage meets like Lucas Lee from uh, Scott Pilgrim. Uh, he's like on the phone with his agent fighting people. And there's one point in the trailer where he's he's like. Oh, wait, I got to take this stunt double. Here, take this grenade. And then the stunt double gets murdered. And he gets totally blown up. Like you see his skeleton and shit. Um, and but see, and so all that's great. I mean, if you just showed me this, it would have been like, oh, that's a pretty cool trailer, right? But what really, uh, what really kind of sold the whole thing for me was at the very end. Um, you go out. Doctor Babylon takes off. The team is there. They're they're carping at. Oh, wait, who's this Johnny Cage guy's name? What? Who is he? Uh, let's see. Well, his code name. What do we got here? Oh, I'm just scrolling through the trailer. God damn it! Keep missing it by like a second. Um, code name Rod Stone. Uh, code name Hollywood. Um, so at the very end, they cut back. You know, the the they get away, and then it cuts back to like this woman in a boardroom, and she's talking to these like holograms, and they're all like they're called. They all have ultra or uh, uh, ultor underneath them. It's great because yeah. that's the corporation, the fucking one of the corporations Saints, from yeah. Saints Row. Yeah. Um, and then, like, she's she's telling him, ah, fuck off, and you guys shut up, just send me money. And then it, like, turns around behind her, and there's this giant cyber fleur, purple fleur-de-lis on the wall. And I'm like, yeah, fucking Third Street Saints in the future. <laughs> like, damn, man. I could not be more excited um, about this. What did you think? Yeah, no, I'm excited. I, I'm, I am all for it. And, you know, listen to the developers saying it is an open world game uh, that, you know, there is going to be some co-op ability that you can do with it, but it's the idea is it's a single player story mm -hmm. uh, open world game, Yeah, uh, which I'm all like, fuck yeah. And the kind of, from what it looks like, it feels like uh, just from what I've been reading and the pictures and the screenshots and stuff I've been seeing of this game, is it feels like where Saints Row was a kind of a, a, a knockoff of uh, of GTA, GTA. Mm -hmm. this is like going like now we're going after crack crackdown now. Fuck that. <laughs> you know that would be such a horrible coup 
if this game comes out before Crackdown 3, 3 yeah. right? Yeah, Crackdown 3. Um, and is better than Crackdown 3. Yeah. Like, that would be the worst for Microsoft. It's like, I feel like there's still, you know, god damn, Microsoft, come on, put out some. That's one of the things about E3 that I'm really hoping. I'm really hoping that Microsoft gets up on that stage and is like, here are 25 fucking games that are coming out next between week. now and the first of next year. Yeah. You know, because, like, I swear, every week I look at, at the release list and. Man, there's just not there's just nothing. Anyway, I don't want to spend this entire time bitching about the Xbox One. I do have to say though that the uh, this is a cinematic trailer, but boy, it's it's super pretty. Yeah, it's it's real stylized, um, and it feels like they they've uh, layered some like almost like like traditional 2D animation over the CG. Yeah, there's some like weird smoke effects in the beginning. Like all the looks- smoke and the 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 whatever you want to call them like the there's smoke, the electricity, uh like the particle effects. Yeah, they like all- everything that's an effect. Yeah. It looks like it's like it's drawn. Also, just I don't know what it is about these characters, but it's like they're they're kind of cell shaded, but they're not really cell shaded they don't yeah. have like that hard outline around them they're just real clean yeah good styling like they kind of look like uh, they what they kind of remind me of is almost like um if you had something like battleborn or maybe even like yeah. fortress 2 but then you had like a really good lighting and shader effects on top of that yeah instead of like trying to make it kind of able to run on any system like the they've got just enough detail that just really goes to show the deep silver i, I couldn't be more excited about this yeah it's no i'm fucking, excited it's fucking incredible uh looks good sounds good i like what they're doing with it i think it's gonna have some kind of saints row i guess the one question would be it looks like in the screenshots that i wonder if these are the only three protagonists if we're switching between them or yeah, if you're gonna have your own protagonist a la saints row that's something i haven't I, I think these characters are the playable characters these mm-hmm. three these three characters yeah um like i don't think you're gonna be able to make your own character in this game which kind of sucks because i want loretta in this future <laughs> <laughs> i want horrible bug-eyed loretta in the future of agents of mayhem uh, so yeah, that was I, I put that one front and center because I don't know if you people at home are as excited, but I don't give a fuck because I'm super goddamn I'm, excited I'm about excited. this. I was happy. Yeah. Um, all right. Next up, uh, not as happy. So, Watch Dogs Two. We knew Watch Dogs Two was coming. We knew that there was going to be a Watch Dogs Two. We now, what I think is hilarious about this, so they sent this whole, they did this whole thing of like, hey, they put out a, 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 an, a an announcement teaser for yeah. the announcement, saying, hey, tune in Wednesday for the announcement of a new game or of a, our next game, and just showed the Watch Dogs logo, mm-hmm. like they didn't actually say Watch Dogs, and then like. Then what was it on IGN? Someone fucked up and hit uh hit publish on an on an ad that actually released the release date the day before the the announce like oh, on Tuesday. <laughs> so we knew the release date. We knew that it took place in San Francisco. Like we knew all this fucking information. Yeah. And then like the night the evening like Tuesday evening apparently the trailer leaked out somewhere oh. as well. <laughs> and like everyone's like. So is this like a like did they purposefully leak this stuff as kind of like a weird arg yeah. uh you know for the announcement or did someone just really fuck up that badly uh, I don't know um I do know that um look look I'm okay here's the thing I want to say to people I am cautiously optimistic about this game Yeah Watch Dogs 1, I was also cautiously optimistic about. I wanted to like Watch Dogs 1. I did a lot, But the too. story was so garbage. Yeah, it was. Well, the main character, Aiden, was, was terrible. Like, um, But hopefully, I mean, like, first off, this trailer, I mean, God only knows that when the game comes out. Okay, here's the thing. I highly doubt that this is what the game is going to look like, this trailer. Oh, no. Um, like, this is obviously. I mean, they pulled that shit on the last one, right? Where they, yeah. they nerfed the PC version. Where you couldn't turn up the settings yeah. high enough, and if you went into an I and I, you could totally set them up. But so this is in San Francisco. Um, it's Watch Dogs. It's CTOS 2.0 in San Francisco. You're playing as what's the what's the guy's name? Do you remember? Uh, it's like Marcus. Uh, Marcus. Marcus. So we'll just say Marcus. Yeah. Um, and Marcus is uh, he has I, been like, so the, the, they did this whole like like 15 minute like we're gonna talk about the making of the game and yeah. like, the things you can do and and when they talked about his character they said so little and used such like vague terms that makes me really worried that we're getting a a remake of the the 
the character from the f- first game, which is basically they were like, well, he's a character from, you know, from the bad part of San Francisco, like Compton or whatever. Um you know, and Compton's he not Compton, LA, no, right? I, 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 <laughs> like I said, oh, yeah. not, but it's like it's like you know this character. He's you know he's super tech savvy and he can do all this parkour stuff. And but he was you know he was blamed for a crime that he didn't commit. So he says down with the man and is joined up with dead sec. Right. And it's like, please tell me that's not the the full extent of his fucking story. Please tell me that there is more to his character than that because that's all your fucking character was in the first game. Well, I, okay, so the the you know what I think that there's actually. Because in the first game, your character was trying to avenge the death of your sister's kid, your yeah. g- n- n- uh, nephew, I yeah. guess, or something like that. Um, because they were trying to come after you because you did a... Because you're a hacker. You're a hacker that went after them, but someone else went in and did the hack while you were trying to do it. So here's the here's the biggest thing, all right? Spoiler alert for Watch Dogs 1. The organization that you end up going up against is just the mob. Yeah. Like the final level is just it's the old man who runs the mob and you've got to hack his panic room and suffocate him or whatever. Okay, that was a bad payoff when you consider that the whole idea of CTOS running the entire city was a really interesting framework to tell a really interesting story about surveillance, privacy, hacking culture. Like there's a lot of stuff that's actually really, really uh, pertinent to our day and age. Like you yeah. can make a really good story about those things, but instead it's just a mob revenge story. So I'm hoping that that the framework of him being framed and having to join up with DedSec is going to be more about taking down CTOS or discovering like that they're doing something nefarious or blah, 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 or at least having some conversations. But then when I watch this trailer, so much of the trailer is like parkour and party, and here's a 3D printer, and we just got a million followers. He which is 3D like, printed a metal gun. Which is like, no, that's not what this game should be about. This game should be about privacy and security and like on the grid versus off the grid and how much technology impacts our lives. And the, the it, it's so frustrating to me because it's the perfect setup to have those conversations yeah. and not to have conversations about roof party USA, bro. Well, and, and wow. they also, I mean, that, mind you, they did talk about some other stuff in the, in the 15 minute thing where they talked about the reason they, put I didn't it in, actually watch that. Uh, the reason they put it in Silicon Valley right. is because they wanted, they wanted to treat it as the, the uh, technological old West. There's so much technology coming in sure. that just everyone is a, a fucking gunslinger with technology kind of thing and that you know there's all these companies that are doing things that are not uh that are doing things with technology some good some bad and right you know you're kind of a, a gun you know a technological gunslinger in the old west targeting the bad ones kind of outlaw ba- targeting the bad guys okay. kind of thing which that's the kind of the they kept using those terms yeah um which is kind of interesting i guess um and you know it, they, but the other thing i thought was interesting they basically said that you can play this game their biggest goal with this game, which I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, was to make the city so believable yeah. that you could not play the game mm-hmm. and it would still feel like a real city. Well, I, I mean, you know, when I look at this, like, obviously this trailer has been doctored. Or, or, okay, here, here's the thing. This trailer might actually be gameplay footage. I don't trust Ubisoft anymore. Oh, they've, fuck no. They've pulled too many of these things where they show us a trailer and it looks fantastic and the game comes out. And it doesn't look like shit, but it looks way lower res yeah. than the fucking trailer. It doesn't look as good. But this setup, you know, the, the, the parts in the very beginning of this trailer where they're just showing you San Francisco... They look really good. Like, yeah. If this is any part of their, if this is like the super high res version, like there was this one shot here really early on. Uh, it's about twenty seconds, eighteen seconds on the trailer that looks like an actual street. Like yeah. this looks legit. Like when I saw that, I was like, "Is that an actual fucking street?" So here's the thing: I'm not excited about this, but I don't want to shit on it either. Yeah, I'm keeping a close eye. I actually want it to be good. I want it to be no. It's such a it's such a great idea for a franchise. I just hope that it doesn't end up being the the same thing. Okay, the last like three well, Ubisoft games that I played have been the exact same thing. You get into a gameplay loop of like go here, kill these guys, do this thing, continue, and then it's just rinse and repeat. It was yeah. like that in Far Cry. I will Primal. say they, they did say something else in that that thing that also caught my interest. That that you talking about rinse and repeat and things that, that right. I think they're doing a little bit different is that they are going out of their way also to make it so that you can play the game the way you want. Yeah. And they said you can play this game as a pacifist. 
Okay. Like, where you do not pick up a gun at all. Well, they also said what I thought was really interesting. One, no towers. Good, Ubisoft. Yeah. Thank you. Two, the entire map is going to be open from yeah. the jump. You know, yeah. that you're not going like, to have to. You can literally just play the entire game. Like, your character goes to an area, gets out his laptop, and sits behind a thing and hacks everything to complete the mission. Now, see, that would be great. Because yeah, like, that, was, that was where I felt that, that, um, that of Watch Dogs 1 fell down in a lot of cases, was you had this really interesting hacking infrastructure, but then you just used it as support for... You're shooting people in his dumb nightstick yeah. that he was beating people yeah. with. And I also thought it was interesting. Like, instead of a nightstick, in this one, he has a cue ball with a rope. Oh, really? It. Yeah, it's a, it's like the, an eight ball with a rope. Like, the, he has attached to a rope. Oh, okay. I did like, I mean, there's a little scene in here that, that made me, it was kind of interesting, where they were like, there was at least two shots I saw of them 3D printing like a gun. Yeah, yeah, his gun is 3D printed. And I, 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 and I think that if the idea, I was just thinking while I was talking about it, if there's a thing here where all the guns are wired up, like, guns the patriot style where you can hack the guns and make them non-functional that could be really interesting yeah. like if you get up to a certain level of hacking you can you could basically just if you get into a situation and everybody's like freeze and you're just like boop and you're like yeah. all their guns are turned off and then but. they did also say that you know how in how in the last game like you would go to an area and only certain people's phones could be hacked right well in this one every phone can be hacked and they even had they are even saying that you can even do a thing that if you level your character up enough you can actually uh, do a thing where you hack multiple phones all at once. Mm -hmm. Like you can walk into an area and cause like a hundred phones to to start ringing, just okay. to cause a huge distraction so that you can do something. That's cool. I again, Watch Dogs was an interesting setup that was just, in my opinion, poorly executed with story yeah. and with some of the mechanics. So I, I will say know. one other feature they did show in the thing that I think was the censure that makes it. You know, I'm going to buy it. Uh -huh. You can pet any dog. What? In the world. Like, you just walk up the dog and pet it. Oh. It's like, you just be like, oh, he's a good boy. You're a good boy. You're a good dog. And then just walk off. Only with, and then pet another dog. Only with CTOS. Only, only with, with CTOS, CTOS 2.0 yes. can you pet every dog. Uh, all right. Well, next up, another uh, another two, another second, another sequel. Injustice 2. <laughs> uh, I feel like they only released this trailer because of the leak. Oh, uh, because of the GameStop leak. Oh, uh, apparently a so they apparently to prepare for the announcement next week. Uh -huh. They really they basically sent out a bunch of promotional material to GameStop uh -huh. where basically anyone who pre-orders this game uh, would get a free poster while okay. supplies last. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the GameStop employees got it, they all like started sending pictures of them to the news outlets. Well, of course. Of course. So, and then the news outlets went, well, we can fucking talk about it. They're sending it to us. Um, so, this, Injustice 2. This trailer is stupid, John. <laughs> I don't like this trailer. You don't at like all. the Brian Cranston monologue? No, the Brian Cranston monologue is all right. It's just like the whole point of this trailer is that everybody's got new cyber armor. That's the point of this trailer. Well, actually, I think, yes, it is. But I, I, I think what's interesting is I'm wondering if they're doing, uh, I forget which Mortal Kombat it was, but, you know, th there was a Mortal Kombat where you could switch your fighting styles on the fly. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering if maybe that's what this is. Yeah. Is that instead of, you know, having you picking one of three styles at the beginning of the uh, the beginning of the match, you actually can switch between them on the fly and the armor is just one of those styles. I that could be cool and I you know I don't want to make any judgments about cuz I liked playing Injustice. I thought yeah. that it was a fun a fun fighting game to play. It's just this particular trailer is all about like all like a you know bunch of the DC superheroes and they're all like just getting this armor all on yeah. top of them. And you got to ask yourself why does Superman and Supergirl need armor? Exactly. Yeah, it makes sense for Batman, but like you know, the f why would the Flash need armor? The Flash's thing is being super fast. Like, yeah, I mean, is, we don't know what the story. In all honesty, here's my theory, my yeah. personal theory, based on absolutely nothing. Mm. Um, I don't think this trailer is indicative of what we're gonna see in the game. Like, I think this trailer was just made to say, "Hey, we're making a fighting game. Here's superheroes fighting each other." Right. Um, and then you know, Brian Cranston doing his monologue. A lot of people have assumed that Brian Cranston's character is voicing Batman. Uh -huh. I'm wondering if he's not pl voicing someone else. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, my question, my big question is, is this the Injustice world, the world from the first game, I mean, where Superman, Superman is evil? Or is this a different world where maybe something else is going on? Yeah. And these are all different, ver this is another Earth, essentially. Um, and my question is, could it be that... This is Mongol in his fight world, 
and maybe Superman is not as super powered because he's not under a, a yellow sun. Okay. And all the superheroes are basically being forced to fight yeah. in this Mongol fight world, uh, you know, for whatever. And basically, the monologue Brian Cranston is actually playing Mongol, Mongol? or something. That'd be cool. I mean, I think that I, you know, what I, in all honesty, the the trailer isn't as bad as as all that. It's, it's just for me between uh, Batman versus Superman and the new Fifty Two and like this. It's just like I'm so tired of dark DC. That's kind of where I'm at right here's, now. I, I agree with you. I agree uh, with you a hundred percent. But here's what I will say with that. Like I was warehouse. really, really worried about injust the first injustice. Yeah. Like I was like, holy fuck, they are ruining Superman. They did this terrible thing. They're just turning it dark for the sake of being dark. Fuck them. And then I got it. It's like, oh, it's a competent shooter. And then they actually fighting game. Or, yeah, not shooter, fighting game. Thank you. Uh, it's a competent fighter. Like it's a really good fighter. I really enjoy this game. This sure. is really cool. And then the story was, oh, it's an alternate Earth. I still was a little annoyed that, you know, Superman's the bad guy on that Earth because it's so fucking cliche and stupid at this point. Yep. Um, that I would rather just them not ever do it. Um, but it's like I, 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 it was good enough that I give them, I will give them the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. to make a good game that is that is interesting and for all we know it could be a thing where again the heroes of the the bright and colorful heroes of the main dc universe go to this go, other world yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. you know kind of thing yep um yeah it could be fine I'm, it, you know nether realm so far has not done me dirty on a fighting game yeah the only thing they did me dirty on yeah. in the first injustice was that fucking scorpion costume be or character uh be uh, being D the part of the season pass for the dlc for injustice uh-huh don't fucking put your goddamn fucking mortal Kombat characters in my dc game okay fuck you okay i paid money for that for that fucking uh season pass i got a goddamn fucking mortal Kombat character but you didn't have any problem with alien and predator in the mortal Kombat universe I didn't, that came later that was a second season pass sure. that didn't come with the initial one. Oh, okay okay yeah I don't know. Seems I don't know. Eh, whatever. And they also, if I'm not mistaken, they told us what was in the season pass before we got it. Oh yeah. For yeah. for which they didn't do that with injustice. Oh okay. Yeah, I don't know. It seems it seems all right. I it, well, I don't know. I don't I don't like what I'm seeing. But again, like you just said, uh, so far, like I'm willing to give a lot of companies a lot of leeway as as long as they haven't really disappointed me with video games. And NetherRealm has not done that. Yeah. So while I don't necessarily care for this, I'm not saying that I think Injustice 2 will be a bad game. I just thought that the whole conceit of that everybody's getting dumb power armor yeah. over their thing was kind of dumb. Yeah. So I will also say I was kind of disappointed that we're not getting a like a, con a full console game version of the WWE Immortals uh, <laughs> mobile game because I was really hoping that's where they were going to go next. Um, I would I would love that, dude. I would love if NetherRealm made a wrestling game. Yeah. I mean, like. The, the, it, because it's essentially just a fighting game, yeah. Just with wrestling characters, yeah. I was, I was, I fucking love that mobile game. The the mobile oh, yeah. game you I played play that shit for like a year. Yeah, still play it every now and then. Yeah, um, it's fucking great. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I was really hoping we'd get an actual full console release with a story mode, just like just like Injustice and, uh, and Mortal Kombat. E three is still a ways away. It's I don't think uh, it's ever gonna maybe. happen. Um, all right. Anyway, next up, uh, we have Destiny: Rise of Iron. Um, which it was the one trailer that John said I didn't watch because I don't give no fucks about Destiny. I don't. I don't. I really That's like. Fine. I was. I was. Literally, we played the the uh, what was it the beta or whatever, and I was like, all right, I get it. I'm done. I'm, yeah. I'm out. See you later. Um, this is. I mean, you know, I think that Des This is a. This is a nice trailer, but yeah. he knows how to make a good trailer. Oh yeah, of course uh, they do. You got this guy who's like the last of the House of Iron or something like that, and they've got this giant. Like this big scourge that's been locked away. This could be some meta thing from Destiny that I have no idea what it is. But basically, um, you know, it looks like it's going to be a new area with some new enemies and some new gear. And the Fallen are there. Um, I mean, you know, it looks pretty cool. Uh, I have a feeling that if they keep, like, I don't have a problem, John, if once a year I can buy like a $30 add-on pack for Destiny that gives me like, eight hours of story missions yeah. because i really liked the fallen king or whatever yeah. the uh, taken or, king what's that the, the taken, taken king. king yeah yeah yeah. and this looks like it has a lot of story in it like i actually wanted more story i wanted less multiplayer raids and more like just straight up story and this looks like it has story it's got some it's got this big icy place it's got new raids it's got all yeah. blah, blah 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 so you know um we'll have to see when it comes out 
uh you know kind of depends um it's got some some cool looking stuff do we know if they're gonna do like they did with the taken king where they really re-release the game but with all the previous dlc at a cheaper price or whatever i don't know that uh this is coming out september 20th um i don't actually know if that's if that's the case okay uh, I do know you get the Iron Horn if you... Uh, pre-order. Pre-order. And yeah. it's in black. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, let's see. The the YouTube thing for this says, Destiny Rise of Iron is the new expansion. Destiny, it features an all-new cinematic story campaign set within the Plague Lands, a brand-new location on Earth, along with new weapons, armor, gear, and a six-player cooperative raid. Um, kind of depends on what they want for it. I would be willing to pay maybe... 10 maybe 15 bucks maybe 20 maybe depending on how long the actual uh dlc was yeah i don't know looks all right um next up i this actually came out yesterday yeah have you watched this there's an um, 18 minute deus ex mankind divided city hub gameplay demo i'm gonna be honest i, I knew about it i i forgot about it <laughs> okay um, when, we, when you asked me about it, I was or asked me about like what I had seen. This was the one thing I, I knew about but forgot. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna just like I feel like we do this every time you and I talk about Deus Ex, John. Yeah, this game looks good. Yeah, it looks like a Deus Ex game. Yeah, uh, they show that there's like multiple ways to get stuff done. Yeah. I kind of like the idea that after certain events that have happened in the world of Deus Ex, that Augs are now like a like people look down on them like they're. Yeah. Like they show a part at the very beginning of this where there's like a subway and there's two lines to it. One is like Augs and one is non Augs or whatever Nogs. Um, but they show here a bunch of different ways to kind of get through the various places. It looks real good. Um, there's a lot of like verticality. Like you, you've got this area that uh, Jensen's trying to get into and he can't. He's got to go around and find a different way to get to it. It's very much like Deus Ex where you yeah. can just blast or you can like use invisibility or you can use this other thing. Um, and the whole thing looks real, real good, and it looks like a Deus Ex game. Um, yeah. So I feel like this is one of those things where, um, you know, Deus Ex is great. I kind of hope that you guys just put it out. Like, stop showing it to me and give it to me because you've already sold me. Like, even if I didn't run Rage Select, I would be excited about this because I like the Deus Ex universe. Yeah. I'm glad that it rebounded from Deus Ex 2. Yeah. And the last Deus Ex was real good. Um this looks real solid. It's got a nice art style to it. Uh, yeah, so I I don't know really what much more there is to say about it. it looks like they've tuned uh, they've tuned up the, the hacking a little bit. Uh, you can see that it looks like everything that's in the game has just been just enhanced from the last one. Yeah, like there's a crazy thing where uh, you're looking for a way to get into this guy's area and not like alert people, and you go into this room. You can like use a hacking thing to like raise up a um, like a, a little cherry picker thing yeah. and you can go into this room and in the room there's a dead woman and if you um you hack her her laptop that's there apparently there's a quest where the guy who's doing the narration for the walkthrough is like you can beat this quest in 15 minutes or it could be up to an hour as you go and root out the reason that she got killed and try to bring her per the perpetrators to justice and he says that like three or four times during the demo that there's yeah. multiple like side quests that are just real deep. It could be made in different ways. So yeah, looks great. I'm gonna stop talking about it now and say just fucking put it out, you guys. Put it the fuck out. I just hope they have a they fix the power a little bit because having to consume consumables to get power back was kind of a drag. Um, yeah, I kind of just wanted to be able to use all my magic cyber powers instead of uh, having to uh, to ration them out. But, yeah, looks real good. So that's Deus Ex. Uh, next up on the list, oh, there was also a second uh, Deus Ex thing yeah. that was less interesting. Deus Ex Breach. Um, Isn't this like a tablet or I don't mobile? think so. Or... I, it says, okay, so the description here says, Deus Ex uh, Mankind Divided Breach, you don't have to put the entire thing on there, is an innovative game mode, including oh, free okay. with Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Basically what this is, is like it's a cyber version of Deus Ex where you're uh, like going into a, the you know, like a, a system and trying to hack it by controlling what looks like a triangle version of Jensen. There was a mobile game that was, yeah, no, but that was for the last one. This anyway looks real dumb because it's like they just took, when you actually see what the gameplay is, it's like they just took 
the gameplay from Deus Ex and they just made all the people out of triangles and put it yeah. inside a computer. Um, like you have a virtual sniper rifle and a virtual machine gun and a virtual grenade you know, launcher. Yeah, and it's kind of like, well, try something that's a little bit different. And then, you know, it says that you can like you can add modifiers um, to make that this game harder. You can share your times with your friends and challenge them to beat your best times. To me, it looks like like um, like they had a render error <laughs> where Adam Jensen was all. It looks triangles. like someone saw uh, Super Hot and they went, "How can we make it look?" No, like that? yeah, you're 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 totally right. It looks like Deus Ex meets Super Hot, except with less of the time stopping and yeah. more of just like like just graphically the just, way the, yeah, the game yeah. looks graphically, like, like not the, play or anything the, like the, that. Like there was, we just were watching the trailer for it, and there was a thing where he shoots little things out of his hand, and they electrocute the two programs there. That's like straight up a a, a power from the main game. Yeah. Um. So is everything else that you're seeing kind of here. So I don't know. It's included free with the game. Great. If you ask me to buy this, I don't think there's any way in hell that I'd be interested in buying this because I like I'm more interested in playing Deus Ex than I am in playing the weird cyber hacky version. Yeah. VR missions. Deus Ex VR missions and shit. Um I don't know. Do you see anything here that looks even remotely interesting to you? No. Okay. Good. Then let's stop. Let's stop <laughs> looking at it. Um uh, all right, next up on the trailer parade, uh there was a new Horizon Zero Dawn trailer with uh, an announcement. Uh yeah, that the game is not going to be out until next year. Delayed. I, are you guys you know, are, is that even a thing anymore? Are we not we're not we know, right? You guys know next week when E3 happens and they're like, and it's going to be out in November. It's going to be out in July. It's not going to be out in November. It's going to be out in July. Anybody that's not Activision or like Square that tells you their game is going to be out in October, they're lying to you. It's going to be pushed back. If, if you just believe that, then you could be pleasantly surprised when the game actually turns up on store shelves yeah. in October. Well, they came out and said, hey, this isn't coming out until what, February? Yes. Uh, it was of, February of 2017. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right, well. All right, cool. We got some more story out of this trailer because the last one didn't really have. Yeah. It was just the gameplay walkthrough where as a kid, the main character, they, they name her. What do you do? You remember what oh, her name? God, it's the name of the trailer. Alloy uh, is her name or Alloy or whatever. Alloy, yeah. Um, was Alloy, motherfucker. It's Alloy, motherfucker. <laughs> was uh, as a kid was given to this like this, this skater haircut, faux hawk caveman guy to raise. And they went to like the Outlands and. Um, it looks like then she's got a dark secret where she's going to have to go back to the ruins of old mankind. She meets Denzel Washington, apparently. With like a modem on his head yeah. or something. Um, I got real, real hefty enslaved vibes off of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I've gotten enslaved vibes since the beginning. But well, that's not a bad thing. It's not, a, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I guess it's just when there's not the giant robot animals around, it has less individualistic flavor yeah. to it like when they're just showing the ruined cities i'm like eh, ruined cities i fucking just played through almost all of fallout 4 again I've, I've i've seen ruined cities whereas the robots that think they're animals that's a whole different story um but it still looks good yeah it looks good i want to play it uh and i still want to play it uh sad that it's uh delayed but hey that happens yeah it's just more time to play other stuff john yeah no i agree when are you gonna be bloodborne man come on just, you come know on. I'm going to get you and Matt Frank to play Bloodborne together. That's what I need. And then when you guys get up to the DLC, then I'll come in and help you guys out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. stab the guy. Uh, yeah, there's some There's some actual, some more kind of like, um, did we see her riding one of those things no, before? No. So she can ride some of these things. We've got a big bird uh, robot. An alligator croc one. bot. we got uh, you know more Dinobots. Um, it looks cool. And there's... Uh, the, the, tree face yeah tree face is holding her out there he's got ghostbusters on his arms or something anyway horizon zero dawn has always i feel like looked good yeah um no i'm excited to I, like i said i think it looks great i i'm like i said i'm disappointed that it's delayed i mean i feel like that's kind of the big thing is they wanted to come out before e3 and be like we know people are going to ask about this it's delayed yeah <laughs> so uh yep yeah, that is that uh Next, we have a trio of uh, Square announcements. Square. Square Enix. Remaking your favorite games over and over and over again. Uh, first up, this is one of the worst kept secrets. Um, I feel like the, I was reading stuff about this nine months ago. Uh, Final Fantasy XII is going to be remastered. Yes. Uh, and it's called Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age, which I don't know what 
actual significance that has to the story. Did you play Final Fantasy XII, John? Nope. Okay. I got Last bored. Final Fantasy that I really got into was ten. Okay. I got bored halfway through twelve. Um, it's interesting, though, because when I look at this, you know, it looks pretty like it always does. Um, Square has good art design, and I feel like their PS2 games still translate pretty well to yeah. PS4. Uh, the only thing that's weird is they did this thing with the faces in 12 that still doesn't look entirely right to me. Like, they got this weird... I don't know. They look weird to me. Like, they're very squinty, and they're, they've yeah. got a lot of, like, weird tones to them. Um, yeah. I remember uh, my roommate got really obsessed with this game. It's It was the one where you could program your party. Yeah. Um, and that's why I finally got to the point where I was like, I don't want to just... I don't want to program Final Fantasy. I want to play Final Fantasy. Also, I don't like half of the characters in this game. I don't like Van, and I don't like... Um, uh, the her the princess. Uh, I like uh, Skyship Guy and Fran. Those are, those are my my buddies. Yeah. Um. But I don't know. It'll give me an opportunity to maybe go back and take a look at it. Um. You know, twelve is one of those ones that I've never beat. I mean, yeah. I, I just re- my biggest memory of this is walking in to to my roommate uh, and saying, "So what you up to?" And he's like, "Playing Final Fantasy 12. And I'm like, "Oh, cool. You enjoying it?" Nope. And then like him getting up and walking away, and the game's still playing because you can program it or whatever. Sure. And he walks away, goes makes a sandwich, comes back, and then goes back to playing it. Uh, and I'm like, "So if you're not enjoying it, why are you still playing?" Because I have no fucking clue. He's like, I'm not playing it. It's playing itself. He goes, in all honesty, I just I, I need these uh, these trophies and um, yeah, and there's something that I want to do in this game, and I don't even know if I really want it, but I guess I'm gonna do it. So yeah, I you know I don't know. Um, it's one of the we- I feel like it's one of the weaker entries in the series that yeah. that. 12 and 13, 11, 12, and 13 really kind of fucked Square a little bit because yeah. 11 was not was the MMO yeah. and 12 was this one that was kind of like, and, and they made such a big deal out of it because it was in the same universe as Tactics. Yeah. Um, and then 13, you know, was the big hallway. So, and 14, God, they haven't had a good one since 10? Yeah. And a lot and of people lot, don't like fucking 10 either. Yeah. A lot of people hated 10. Yeah. I like 10, though. I think 10's okay. It's all right. Titus is a blank, but. Yeah, you know, well, yeah. Titus of course. Is but total. he also doesn't exist. Yeah. He's a total He's a total asshole who's. Oh, my dad it turned into a monster. Um, all There's right. a reason he's a wang. Yeah. Uh, it's because of Blitzball. It's because everybody that plays Blitzball is a wang. Because he didn't exist. <laughs> he was um, a figment of someone's imagination. Yeah. Spoilers. Yeah. Uh, next, World of Final Fantasy. Do you remember this <laughs> Yes, game? I do. Okay. Um, so for those of you who don't remember World of Final Fantasy, this is the game that's all about characters on top of other characters. Yeah, you have chibi-fied versions of all of the Final Fantasy characters in existence. Yeah. And, uh, you stack them on top of each other, and then the two main characters aren't chibi-fied, but they can become chibi-fied. Yeah, and I think that it's like that you could stack. Sometimes you put the chibi-fied version of them on top of like a regular, like an Ifrit or something. And yeah. Then sometimes it's like chibi-fied lightning on top of the main character. This it's weird. Trailer did very little for me. I was just like. I don't, I mean, it was just like, it's like fan service. It's it just, is. It's just hardcore fan service, it right? Is. Um, like, oh, look, it's a teeny little, it's a little cute cloud. I love cloud. Meow, 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 meow. Um, it's a chibi squall. It looks stupid. It looks kind of dumb to me. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's going to be good. The other thing is that this particular trailer is so fucking full of exposition yeah. that I'm just like, ah. And you can stack apparently three tall. Uh, you can stack a thing yes. on the head of a thing on the head of another thing. And I'm like, is this really what you've come up with, Square? You know what? It could be fun. It you could, don't know. No, it could you totally could, be fun. It could come out and then there's, start, there's fucking Titus. Chibi Titus. Yeah. Uh, but no, you could totally play and suddenly, boom, this is like, you're like, holy shit, this game's really fun. It's the fun. best Final Fantasy game I've ever played in my life. Uh, I doubt that highly. I didn't say it was the best Final Fantasy game you ever played. I'm just saying it could be really good. It could be good. It could be good. Um, just really weird. It's just there's something about mixing the chibi versions with the art style of the non chibi stuff that really does. It looks very strange to me. Like they're not even really well animated. They're yeah. big old dumb blockheads. Um, just put out fucking fifteen already. Come on, you guys. September, man. I know, but come on, you guys. Come on. It'll probably get delayed. Uh. So yeah. Anyway, World of Final Fantasy. Eh, it's, it's all right. 
which is more than I have to say about Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Prologue. What? Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I missed this one. <sighs> okay. You know, they've been putting out all the, the Kingdom Hearts, yeah. right? In HDs for yeah, 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 PS4. Yeah. This is the last one. This is Dream Drop Distance. Oh, okay. The 3DS game that's been made uh, into... Uh, it's HDified. The trailer doesn't look that bad. It's yeah, a little it rough good. around the edges. Uh, it's okay. But it's all right. Uh, is that, was that Jeff Bridges? Yeah, that was, that was Tron. Uh, oh, okay. Um, this is officially the point where when I watch this trailer, I'm like, I have no fucking idea at all what is happening I here. I don't think anyone knows what the fuck is going on oh, in this no. game anymore. Oh, no. Somebody hit me up on Facebook and was like, this is amazing. And I'm like, really? Because I don't understand. Then also, they think they've done this with some of the other ones. It's Dream Drop Distance, and then it's another thing where they've made a movie out of something. Um, or there's another game that they're... Because I don't think that what we're looking at right now, this isn't Dream Drop Distance. This is something else. I actually had the Wikipedia page open, and then I closed it because I did. I was tired of looking at it. But um, Okay. So what do we got here? Aqua's Battle with the Heartless and Kingdom Hearts Point Two Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary passage, new HD gameplay from Dream Drop, Drop Distance, and new scenes from Kingdom Hearts X back cover that sheds light on the mysterious foretellers. So that way, wait, what was that one that we just looked at? So this that's back cover is this one with the girl. I don't know yeah. what this is. I don't know. I mean, fuck it. I have no idea who this is. Why? I, I don't. I stopped understanding what Kingdom Hearts is about with about with two with two. Yeah. And then this last one, this last thing here is just a movie. It's not even and and like it's not even it's not just a movie. It also everybody's got like these animal masks on and there's no Disney at all in it and it's like this is the point where they've they've gone down the weird heartless road so far that I do not understand what is happening in this universe anymore. Um at the end of the trailer the guys are like, oh, man, we, ha we can't listen to the elders. We've got to get out of here before the war starts. I'm like, what war? What elders? Who are you? What the fuck is going on in here? I don't understand. I thought it was about Disney. I thought it was about Donald Duck and Cloud having a conversation. But it gets so convoluted that this is like the point where I don't even know what the fuck. So it doesn't look bad. And I'm sure if you're a fan of Kingdom Hearts, this is the last, like, as of this game, you can now own basically every single piece of Kingdom Hearts that's ever been out, right? On the PS4? On the PS4. Great. That sounds like it's awesome. Um, and upcoming announcements for Kingdom Hearts 3 this winter. <laughs> that's, that's, that bodes not well, right, in that trailer? No. This winter, as opposed to E3, as yeah. opposed to, like, new announcements for Kingdom Hearts 3 in two days. We're going to have a new trailer for you. Yeah. This winter. And in this winter, they'll be like, and Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming out 2018. Yep. <laughs> oh, don't say that. That just bummed out. You know, there's, there's a, there was a bunch of people that were listening to this podcast, and when you said that, they all just went, aw, you're right, but damn, man, that's harsh. Um, so, yeah, I don't understand it. I, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that, like, this is Square has a tendency with some of these games to be like, look at all this stuff, and I'm like, I don't understand. I mean, are we at is. the point where Kingdom Hearts 3 could be released and the people playing it may not have actually been born when the first Kingdom Hearts came out? Uh, well, obviously, yeah. Uh, I think so. Let's see. When did Kingdom Hearts c first came out? Um, Kingdom Hearts was originally released in... Boop, 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 2002. Okay. So anybody that was born... Let's say you are born the year Kingdom Hearts came out, you would be 14 right now. You'd be yeah. fucking teenager. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I mean. Like, they're fucking teenagers. Maybe a tween. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yep. Well, when did Kingdom Hearts 2 come out? Uh, Kingdom Hearts. Nope. When's Kingdom Hearts 2? Kingdom Hearts 2. Because that was not that far after. That was 2006 in Japan. Yeah, 2006 in North America. Uh, 2005 in Japan. So anybody that was born, they would be uh, 10 right now. Yeah. yeah. It's been a decade since Kingdom Hearts 2 came out. And then they've just been putting out like fucking 3ds and mobile and you know gba and all these fucking crazy games anyway yeah. uh all right and I, I think this might be the last trailer uh but i know it's the one that john is most excited i am excited about. for this uh lego dimensions is getting a shitload of content now this is not 
like another a sequel. game. No, no, this is uh, this, this is, is more add-on packs. Add -on packs. Though they are, there is a new type of add-on pack. Oh, really? Tell me um, about it. Which is basically, it's going to be, it's the Ghostbuster set, uh -huh. and it's called a, it is called a story. Like, because the previous ones are level packs, are the most expensive. Oh, right, 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 yeah. And now they're doing one that's called a level pack, or it's called a story pack, which is its own, it's essentially a base. It comes with Lego pieces that you can attach to the base for uh, the game. The po oh, the portal. The portal, to yeah. actually change what the portal is. Uh-huh. And then it's, from what I understand, it's a Lego game that is a retelling of the movie. Oh, okay. the, the new one, the new movie, the new, the, the new with, Lady Ghostbusters, movie. Lady Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. So they're and they're like, that's the big thing now is that they're they've like, it's like a full on game. Like instead of releasing a, uh, a Lady Ghostbusters Lego game, they just basically said, here it is in uh, Lego Dimensions. Well, let's see. Uh, what? Oh, actually. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so we have. Let's see. September 27th, uh, release of Ghostbusters Story Pack featuring uh, the entirety of the movie. Uh, this features the first conversion kit for the toy pad, giving it a new look. Another featuring Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Oh, the new Harry Potter movie will be out later. Uh, also coming on September 27th of the following, A-Team Fun Pack. A-Team! With the fucking B.A. Brock as yeah! the A-Team band. I'm Pity the Fool! Harry uh, Adventure Time level pack and team yeah. pack. Uh, Harry Potter team pack. Mission Impossible level pack. That's one of those ones where I'm just like... Do what now? Well, of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, other properties being added this year include Beetlejuice, <laughs> E.T., The Goonies, Gremlins, Knight Rider, Knight Rider. I didn't even know that was in there. Yeah, Lego City Undercover, Powerpuff Girls, Teen Titans Go, and in the most crazy, Sonic the Goddamn Hedgehog. Yeah, Lego Dimensions is so weird. Like I, I fucking love it. Have you? Did you play through all of it? Not I all of it. Buy... No, okay. I, I, I got the problem is that you gave it to me. Yeah. Um. At a point where there were like six other games out. Oh yeah. And so like I was like ah I'll come back to this you know like I like I because I have to deal with like toys and I'll come back to this and I'll right. come back to this and I've gotten a few sets uh to play with it uh since then but I haven't really like I really want to go buy all the other sets yeah uh like I still need to get all the Doctor Who sets and oh yeah uh, yeah because that wasn't even out I don't think when yeah I, when no I it wasn't. Played. But, uh, yeah, I am. Um, but they're making it really hard to resist the urge to buy all these. Good on you, Lego, because you know what? Like, that's a that's a ton of, of content. That's a that's a grad goddamn shitload of content. Uh, and like I said, when we talked about Lego Dimensions originally, like, the fact that so many of these franchises would never have any kind of video game tie-in unless it was part of this is crazy. Yeah. Knight Rider. Yeah. Ooh, uh, you know... Fucking, well, I was going to say Sonic the Hedgehog, but that's not right. Yeah, uh, that part at the end is pretty fun with Gollum Sees reaching for the, the ring. and then The one Sonic. ring, and Sonic grabs it because he goes after gold rings. Yep, he's all about them rings, y'all. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, Lego Dimensions. I'm excited. I, <laughs> I'm going to be broke. It's a bit much. It's a bit much. It's too much. I'm going to be broke. All right, so uh, that's all the trailers that we have, but we're going to zip down a bunch of the news stories because we are already over time. Oh, we're always over time. By about five. No, we're not. We're not that bad we're actually could be shooting for the two hour mark okay uh microsoft is halting all the dvr development for the xbox one sure um which i think is interesting as a a final note on the whole like so how did that tv thing work well, out okay for so you? i look at it like this yeah i look at it as they they went okay what don't you want and people said we don't really fucking care about your dvr feature and they yeah. went all right cool no there's a quote to uh the verge where they said after careful consideration, we've decided to put development of DVR for over-the-air TV on hold to focus our attention on launching new, higher fan-requested gaming experiences across Xbox One and Windows 10. Good. You need games, motherfucker. Like, you need more games for the Xbox One. Like, I know that, you know, Overwatch and that stuff is out, but they need more console exclusives. Especially, especially, I feel like this is a very dangerous time, John, because I... I willing to bet that on monday tomorrow that they're going to come out and say here's the new xbox one it's four hundred dollars and like you're really going to need a good reason for people to buy that if both sony and uh, microsoft come out with a new upgraded console for 400 bucks you're going to need to give people a good reason to choose the xbox one it's going to be just like that and i feel like the ps4 has built up a, a bigger back catalog of exclusives and stuff to get than the Xbox One has yeah. over the last, what, two years? Yeah. It's two and a half years, three years, whatever. Yeah. Um, so, 
yeah, it's good that you guys are are doing this, but it's like I feel like you should, they should have done this a year ago. Like, was there were there really people who were like, I'm going to get that Xbox One because so that I can DVR my favorite TV shows. I'm sure there were some people out there, but it feels like the vast majority of people already have their fucking TV on lockdown, right? Yeah. They've already got. If their there's solution. one thing I li- one feature I like about the DV or about the 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 the, w- the fact that they even approach the DVR thing um, that I didn't know I wanted, and now that I have it, I would hate it if it's a thing that went away on future co- like the re-release of the console or whatever. Yeah, is that HDMI input mm-hmm. uh, on the back of it, and actually having the ability to like have my t- cable tv plugged in so i don't have to turn off my fucking console i just tell it oh switch to tv and it, oh oh and, you know i don't have to worry with button switches like i fucking use that like crazy okay. and what's even cooler is like if i didn't have cable tv i could just plug my my ps4 up to it and it should be playing my ps4 through my xbox through your xbox one yeah heresy like you could totally do it the emperor demands your head there will be no what are you talking about you're gonna use the dvr functionality of your xbox one as a pass-through for the ps4 i never thought about that that's insane and it's totally doable oh i'm sure it is no 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 microsoft actually came out and said yeah no you could do it like there was like we're not telling you to do it but you could do it wow that's uh because someone i remember last year at e3 someone asked them about it and he was they were like yeah you could can you then use the DVR functionality to do game capture off of no, your PS4? No, because you can't use the DVR uh, functionality on the Xbox One for the TV. Oh. Well, I mean, it didn't, because it doesn't use, that's not the DVR, like, the it's just a pass-through. It's essentially, it doesn't, like, there's no actual DVR functionality. In the Xbox One? Uh, yeah. Isn't there? That's what, the, what we're just talking about. Well, though, it's, right? no, 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 it never got launched. Mm, are you can't. I thought that I read reports when the Xbox One first launched that said that they it was able to do that. That it was able you could set up DVR and programming and all that stuff. No, no, no. So wait, it never actually got DVR functionality. No. Well, geez, Microsoft. Okay, the good that you suspended it. I guess if you've been working on it for three years and it has never launched, like, I mean, you could you could tell it to look at the your cable providers uh like history and you could see what time stuff is airing yeah but it was you never like set a, it to record are you sure you, about you could that? never set it to record are you no 100% sure no about that? You, you never could th- again it's halting the development of the dvr feature okay it never actually had the dvr function well so that was just a cable pass-through box was all it was yeah as of right now, I mean, and, and what's funny is I actually use that a lot. Ah, that's disappointing. Anyway, um, speaking of disappointing things, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Capcom is putting out. Okay, so this is more of a, a thing. Um, th- this story is just basically talking about, uh, kind of reiterating the pricing and the release date of the ca- of the Street Fighter Five story mode and stuff. There's a little bit change to it though. Oh, is there? Well, so if you remember correctly, okay. So first of all, everyone knew end of June we're supposed to be getting the update for for Street Fighter Five that comes with its cinematic story mode. Right. That's all the same. That's that's still coming at the end of the month. However, what they changed is originally you were going to have your you have your fight money, which everyone can earn right now. Uh-huh. Um, and then they were going to launch their store with a Zenny current currency that you could buy okay. to actually buy actual items instead of using fight money. Okay. Um, they have gotten rid of Zenny entirely. Oh, so and now just use it, money. You, you just actually, it basically, when you say you want to buy it using real money, it just takes you to the PlayStation uh, store. Good on is you. Is what they're going to do. They're, and it's funny because originally they, like right now, you can play both Guile and Alex for free uh-huh. um, right now uh, because the store hadn't launched yet. And so since the store hadn't launched because they hadn't gotten this anything worked out. Right. Um, they didn't have a way to sell people the, the characters. So they were like, ah, it's free until the store launches at the end of June. Oh, and they're going to take it away? And then, and then those characters get taken away. Oh, man. And then you have to either spend fight money or you buy them for real money. I think that Capcom has handled all of Street Fighter V poorly. Oh, I agree. Uh, like launching it and then w- making us wait this long for story mode. I just the whole that whole zenny and fight money. Uh, I was just I mean like I mostly just brought this up because I just want to reiterate to people listening and to the audience that like I think that Capcom should take a hit on this because I think that they treated the Street Fighter Five launch like an early access launch, and I don't like it. I don't like the precedent set when companies can be like, well, we had to, we had a tournament, so we had to put out an unfinished game and then patch in the rest of the functionality later on. Like, nah, no, uh-uh, not on my watch, buddy. That 
Yeah. Or at least well, I'll I, just I, wag I, my I, finger at you and say, eh. If I'm not mistaken, I think some of the public, like, developers or speakers for the the company have actually kind of come out and said yeah we kind of bungled that whole thing up yeah um we kind of maybe well, should give have us waited. guile for free then give us yeah. guile for free like yeah. don't make me spend my fight money well because guile is part of the season pass so people have already bought him if they bought the season pass they've already bought him and all the characters well uh... so now you use the fight money to buy characters you can use the fight money to buy uh levels and some costume packs though there are some premium costumes that you will not be able to use to spend uh, fight money on you can only buy with real money now wait a minute i thought they said that the, you could the, buy well, everything with fight money the premium costumes are all the pre-order bonuses oh jesus so in other words the only way you can get the pre-order bonuses is if you actually spend God, real money jesus all right let's let's fucking move on from here um, uh, going back all the way to the beginning where we were talking about Ubisoft, Ubisoft has, I didn't, I didn't know this, but apparently the division has been having a hell of a time with cheaters. Yeah. Um, and Ubisoft has been trying to ban the cheaters, but now they have upped the ante where if you are caught doing some, some shady shit in the division, first time perma ban. Um, so, okay. um, well, you know, that's what you get for cheating. Well, Yeah. I hope they're, they're getting it under control. Um, I personally, I think the last time that we had a story about this, I mean, there were some people who have talked about getting banned, uh, that that when people, that one of the arguments that people make is if you get banned for something you didn't do, if you get accidentally banned, right? But I feel like there should be an appeals process for that, whereas, like, you know, it should be fairly easy to be like, are you duping or doing something crazy? Get the fuck out of here. Because the division, if it's going to, I mean, I haven't been back to the division to see. There's apparently, I keep seeing all these YouTube videos of, like, some dude blogging from the division or something. Like, uh, But I'm all for it at this point. I'm like, you know what? The number of people, unless you have an epidemic of people getting permabanned, for stuff that they didn't do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't feel like giving fucking cheaters in online multiplayer games a second chance is worth it. Get them the fuck out of here. You can go play Counter-Strike with a bunch of hack bots turned on or whatever the fuck you're into because it's just a shit move to fuck up other people's fun. Yeah. And yeah, go fuck yourself. Um, next up, uh, The Sims this week has basically... They've got a new patch, which has uh, this is more of like a PSA than anything else um, that has basically unlocked a bunch of uh, gender restrictions for okay. clothing and like hairstyles and makeup. Oh, and, that's cool. Uh, like also um, like emotions, like the way that a character walks and stuff aren't divided by gender anymore. So you can oh, do whatever okay. you want to. That's actually really cool. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was just a free thing. They talked about doing it. Apparently, there were some restrictions before about, like, certain hairstyles or certain types of things that you couldn't put on certain characters depending on their gender, and now you can basically do whatever the fuck you want to. So, hey, yeah, good on you. Um, this is one of those things where I'm like, who's it hurting? Yeah. You know, just let no, people I think do that's what great. they want to do. Um, let's see. Next, uh, Remedy has talked about, uh, I've got a re- uh, kind of rumor report that Remedy is working on two games. Yes. Uh, one in conjunction with a third party and one that is a brand new IP that they've been kicking around. And unfortunately, neither of those games are is Alan Wake 2. Alan Wake 2. So yeah. um, I did, you know, I thought it was kind of interesting. I think it was. Partially, they they made the announcement because a bunch of people thought that they were going to be like making an announcement about something going on at E three, and they're like, no, 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 we're still we're still working on Quantum Break. Like we're still like like working on it to iron out any patches or bugs or things like that for the PC version. Yeah, like we're still supporting that that game. Uh, we've grown enough that we can separate into two teams now. One team is working with a third party that is not Microsoft, which I, I thought was the more interesting thing. Uh, that they actually did specify it is the third party that they're working off is not Microsoft. Okay. And this will be the first, I mean, th- like since Alan, Max Payne? Since, yeah, I mean, Alan Wake and Quantum Break were both Microsoft uh, partnered games. Yeah. Um, but so this is the first one that will not be partnered with Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't say whether that game is a new IP or an existing IP. Mm-hmm. Um, but they said that the other game that they're working on, that the second team is working on, that's currently still in the early development stages, is a completely new IP. Okay. And has no partners at the moment. Okay. Uh, though it may get a partner at some point in the Did future. Did you ever end up finishing Quantum Break? Um, no. Okay. I never ended, actually ended up playing Quantum Break. Um, yeah. It just kind of came in the middle of a, a time when I just, I didn't 
hook into it. Yeah, I got stuck on that last level, and I got so pissed off that I was like, no, I'm moving on. It's good, though. I, I mean, I'd, I'll I, go back to it because it's really good. I would rather see Remedy make a new IP than another Alan Wake yeah. game. Uh, and, and they basically said they're not giving any more information other than that. They just wanted people to know that it, Ward was. they knew Ward was going to get out, that they're working on new projects. Right. Uh, the one that they're working on with a partner, they ha- they are waiting for the, that partner to make the decision on when to announce. Right. And they didn't want people to think they were working on another Alan Wake game. I like to think that it was like... Some Remedy employee on his lunch break goes over to pick up a copy of uh, Mirror's Edge at GameStop, and he's just chatting with the guy at GameStop, and and then he gets back to the office, like, "Oh fuck, I mentioned that we were working on games, and I work at Remedy. Quick, release a press, release, release all the trailers immediately. Those GameStop fuckers won't stop for anything." Yeah. But uh, but they said they're not saying what the games are because they don't want to set like they don't because they feel like with both Quantum Break. And even Alan Wake, to a degree, mm. they released information about those games before those games were... Like, too early, when yeah, they were still in alpha. Yeah, and... before they even knew what those games were. Right, right. And then people were like, why did it take you five or ten years to release this game that you were working on? Right. And then, you know... Yeah, it's a uh, it's definitely a, a balancing act about getting your getting <laughs> yeah. that information out there uh, at the right time. Yeah. So. Um, unfortunately... There's more bad news uh, as far as games go. Persona 5 is not coming out until Valentine's Day of 2017, uh, which I kind of knew that was going to be the case. Yeah, that was, the, yeah, that was, this is the first time they've announced a release date for the U.S. version. Yes. Um, I think that there were a lot of us that were hoping that they would be doing one of these, like, it's releasing in Japan and the U.S. the same day. Yeah. That's totally wishful thinking. Something the size of Persona with that much dialogue and stuff is going to take time to localize. So, uh, 2017, we'll get to see happy Valentine's day to me. I'll be at home playing, uh, persona five. Yeah. Um, but, but Hey, until then you can play, uh, whatever that cro- persona crossover with, uh, fire emblem. Oh, game on the Wii U. Yeah. Tokyo sessions, uh, sharp F E. Yes. That one. Yep. I always forget the name because yep. the new name is like super fucking confusing. Yeah. Uh, it's easier to remember than Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem. True, true. Um, all right. Uh, next, uh, unfortunately, this is like the bad news bears section of the podcast. Uh, that Allison Road game yeah. uh, that was like the spiritual successor to PT has been canceled. Oh. Yeah. Um, so let's call it the, the curse of PT. Um, I don't know if there's been actually... I know they said that they would release a statement, but I don't know if a statement ever came. Let's yet. see. Let me let me get up on their Twitter account and see if they actually ever did. Nope. Looks we'll like their last tweet was Hi. Sadly, Allison Road has been canceled. Statement to come in the next few days. Thanks for all your support. Very sad it came to this. Um, that was five days ago. Um, what happens if you click on their their website, Allison Road Game? I don't know. Com. Let's, let's see. Maybe that maybe there has been a a, a release. Uh, uh, I would have I guess that it's Blurg, not. Blurg. Uh, yeah, it looks like they yeah. haven't updated anything okay. here. Okay, well, they haven't. Um, yeah, so. All right. Uh, I don't know. I think I remember playing Allison Road briefly, and it really was. I mean, they were looking to do something that was kind of like PT. Uh, my guess is that they either ran out of money or that the premise ended up not working. Yeah. Um, the thing about PT was that, I mean, that's one of the things that I feel like people get real, or I don't know, I don't know, but I feel like I get the impression that sometimes people don't entirely understand that PT was a, a singular experience. Like yeah. what Silent Hills was going to be was, was not, not PT. PT is a separate thing from Silent Hills. So trying to make something that's like PT um, maybe doesn't work quite right because that isn't what was going what, what that game was going to be. That was just a tech demo. Yeah, and it was a very clever tech demo, but it was also a very tight little gameplay loop that I don't know if you were going to expand that. Like, I don't know if PT would have worked if you were just in a house and not going through that hallway multiple times and seeing it change. Well, then it would have just been gone home. Right. But with actual horror. Right. And I feel like that's kind of what Allison Road was. At least I th- I think I remember playing a demo for it, and it just didn't make that much of an impression on me. But then I'm not the target audience for this type of game. But anyway, pour one out for poor Allison Road um, and listen to Jim Blossom's... Um, all right, we got two more, and then we're done. Um, this is a real weird story. I don't know if you saw this, John. I, I did. There is a game called Frontwire Galaxy in Turmoil um, on that's being made that's a remake of Star Wars Battlefront 3. What is it called again? Frontline 
Galaxy. Oh no, Frontwire Studios is the name of the the thing. It's called Galaxy in Turmoil. Yes. Um, this is yeah a full remake of Star Wars Battlefront um, three. It's a free to play game. It'll be a free to play game. It's being made by a bunch of fans that want to make a kind of a that want to take Star Wars Battlefront three because everybody loves Battlefront three so much and make it. Now, that's not weird. The weird thing is that Steam has said that they'll actually publish this on Steam. Because the, of, because they're not charging anything. Right. But it still seems like the sort of thing that you're going to... I mean, this seems like the, the, the what, the Metal Gear HD remake project. Yeah. Like, you're kidding, right? Because, like, I get the feeling that next week we're going to have a story about, well, Frontline Studios has canceled uh, Galaxy and Turmoil because, I mean, they're straight up using... You know, they've got Y-Wings and AT-ATs and stuff that is like, that is intellectual property of fucking Disney, right? Like, yeah. you can't just, you can't just make a game with AT-ATs and stuff. I don't know, especially when you're saying like, oh, this is a remake of Battlefront 3. I just don't know. This is old footage, I think, that we're looking at right now. But yeah. um but it seems real strange to me. Like I, I just it really get... seems real strange to everybody. Everyone's like, "How is this not?" Uh... I mean, I get it's one of those things where inevitably, when this stuff happens, the company that's the company, quotey fingers, that's making it or mod team or whatever. Like, as soon as the developer finds out that they're doing it, or as soon as the IP holder finds out that they're doing it, they shut them down. Right yeah. now, I mean, the thing is, is that they've, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and and please correct me if I'm wrong, they're making all, remaking all the assets themselves, mm -hmm. right? Like they're not like just taking the assets and upresing them or anything like that. They're like remaking everything from yeah. scratch. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I would assume that'd be the only way that they could even remotely try to get in there. But it's like at that point, my point is like, okay, why don't you make the same game but change it so it's your own IP? I. It just seems like I mean, you know. Call it Galaxy in Turmoil. Change the Stormtroopers to be regular, like, Halo space soldiers. Guys or something. You know, space yeah, soldiers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, keep a guy with a, with a laser sword, except, you know, maybe it's a... Laser axe. Yeah. Katana, laser Or no, katana. Maybe, maybe it's like a, a sword with a laser edge on it or something. You know, maybe you change it up, everything up a little bit. Yeah, so that it's I, still the same game, but it's... I just, I don't think, like, if I wanted to make a game even for free that was all Star Wars... Well, I guess, I guess, though, if they're not charging for it, I guess, but... Well, that's the thing, is that the, the Metal Gear remake guys were like, oh, we're not going to charge for this, it's going to be free, and it's... Yeah, I guess, I maybe, maybe Disney isn't as litigious as I think, because we also had that story a while back about the KOTOR remake in Unreal Engine 4 yeah. that somebody's making that hasn't been shut down yet, I don't think. So maybe Disney is like, well, if you don't charge for it, fuck it. We're we're gonna be less litigious about this. I don't but know. I if I was Disney, I would be more litigious about it because it just seems like somebody ripping off your copyright. Not that I don't want to see this come to fruition. It looks good, you know. Yeah. Like I'd like to play it, but it just seems like one of those fools' errands to me that can't couldn't possibly actually come all the way out. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, I don't know. Uh, and last but not least, we got one more trailer. I saved one for the end. It sticks, Shards of Darkness. Did you watch this trailer, John? No. You know, Is this a sequel to the first Sticks game? Well, the, that Sticks game was actually a sequel to the Focus Interactive uh, Goblin, Men and Goblins or something okay. like that. Or Orcs and Goblins, where it was the big orc guy and then Sticks. Um, this trailer actually looks really good. Uh, like... That sticks as a thief has been uh, contracted to steal uh, like an artifact, and then he gets embroiled in a bunch of stuff. And it's a real hot trailer. Like it, the graphics are are of a higher fidelity than I remember the last sticks game being. Um, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, like uh, it's got a very much a kind of a flavor of its own. I liked when we played on Sunday streaming. I liked the sticks game that we played. Um, you know, yeah. no, I remember getting it for free as part of like PlayStation Plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I yeah. never actually played it, but I, that's cool. No, yeah, looks real good. Stick shards of darkness. Um, that's a little hard to. You maybe maybe would have want to, you know, stick something else, something that's not S again. Anyway, uh, but it still looks good. I've got kind of a mat on for um, for Focus Interactive and yeah. those guys because they they do weird middleware games. What was that one that we looked at a while back that was like the Mars, the sequel to the Mars? 
project or whatever. Oh, uh, um, that was like a weird Deus Ex on Mars. Yeah, it's like Technomancer yeah. is supposed to be coming out soon. Yep. So yeah, I don't know. Looks cool. Uh, check out the trailer for it. Um, seems seems pretty pretty stylish. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a break. When hey. we come back, we're going to read some emails. So stay tuned, and we will be back momentarily. The worst part about not having a car is done. Mm. Um, I've been having to drink those like bottled Starbucks frappuccinos. Yeah, they're so sugary. They're just so just like blah, 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 blah. so much sugar, so much sugar. Yeah, you could just not drink them. Uh, but I need the caffeine, man. I need my hit. I need my. I need my fix. Uh, hey, everybody! Welcome back to to your fix of the Rage Select podcast. Uh, we're gonna do some uh, some emails here, but before we do that, uh, I want to do a little another little mini review today. Oh, mini review! Yeah, a little mini review. Uh, so I last week, uh, Brian Brushwood and I played uh, Fallout Four Far Harbor. Yeah, and that now means that I've gone through all three of the Fallout Four DLCs. Yes. Uh, so I just really briefly wanted to talk about them. Um, the, so there are three of them. The first one, okay. Let's just start with, let's start with the second one. Uh, Wasteland Workshop. Wasteland Workshop is five dollars, and it literally has no story beats to it. It's yeah. not like Hearth Fire or whatever, the one on Skyrim where they were like, adopt a child and build a house and do whatever. It's like it just gives you a shitload of things that you can build in your yeah. on your settlements. Um, now, I would say that it's completely worthless because unless you want to make neon signs s- saying Almond Space's name, uh, which you all should totally be getting and doing, um, it's completely worthless. Except that it lets you build this archway where when you walk through the archway, it removes all of your rads. And like that, to me, is almost worth $5 just all on its own after the amount of radiation that you pick up. Because in Fallout 4, when you pick up radiation, it like it. The more radiation you have, the smaller your life bar gets. There's a part yeah. of your life bar that never comes back. Um, so Automatron is the first DLC, and that's basically just this one mission that takes you to a bunch of different places where you're fighting against this um, character called the Mechanist that has sent all of these bots out to ravage the wasteland. And the thing about that is that you can kind of make your own bots when you get done with it. Yeah. You get a bot workshop. You can pick up bot pieces and put them together. You get a new settlement area at the end of it. Um, it does have one thing that I think is really interesting where you get a little um, a thing where you can send one of those little eye bots out, the little yeah. circle bots, and you can send it to go find you a location where there's a specific resource. So if you're missing a resource to like craft something, you'd be like, go find that resource, and then no, it'll mark it on cool. your map. You can go there. You can pick it up. It doesn't actually – like one of the bad things about it is one day I was like, go find this resource. And it was like, found it. And I went and I battled a bunch of super mutants. And when I got to the place where the resource was, it was in a safe that was like master level locked. And I'm Uh-oh. like, Almond Space is stupid. I can't unlock this safe, motherfucker. Um, so then you have to have another robot that's master of lock picking. Which you can do. You actually, you, could, you can set up on all of your robots. You can set uh, like lock picking and stealth. The one thing that is a little bit um, uh, of a drawback with that one is that if you're not running a character, like Almond Space was one intelligence, and that was very specific. He didn't need fucking intelligence. Um, if you don't have enough intelligence to pick the science perks up, there's a bunch of the robot parts that are really cool that you can't actually build unless you have a certain amount of science. Um, and that kind of pissed me off a little bit because it, it felt like, well, I can swap in the parts that I've gotten from robots that I've blown up, but I can't build, like, the fucking lightning gun, right? Um, so that was a little disappointing. Uh, the third one is Far Harbor, and that's the one that I just beat. That's the expensive one. It's 25 bucks. It's kind of got a very similar feel to it. I said this before, but it's got a very similar feel to it to Point Lookout from Fallout 3, where you get in a boat, you go to this new area. It's a big island. It's got a bunch of new stuff on it, new enemies, new NPCs, new three different factions that you do quest lines for, a bunch of new equipment, a bunch of um, new recipes and things that you pick up. It's okay. Um, I don't think, in all honesty, when I look at all three of these, 
Um, I don't think that all three of them are worth fifty dollars together. Like, okay. I think that if you're, unless you're a huge fan of Fallout, in which case you probably already have these. But if you're probably uh, bought, and then probably bought the season pass when it was cheaper. Right, right. If you're waffling, it, like, and that's the thing is that if you could still get these for thirty bucks, I feel like they would kind of be worth it. Like all three of them together for thirty bucks would kind of be worth it. But for fifty bucks, it's a little bit much. Was um, it, didn't they say that there was going to be a fourth? Thing that they hadn't announced that was part of that season pass? I don't know. Maybe. If they do, that could totally make it worth it. But see, right now, Far Harbor by itself is $25. The um, Wasteland Workshop is $5. And uh, Automatron, I believe, is $20, which makes the full $50 yeah. of what you would... Or something like that. Anyway, um, it's okay. I think that, honestly, if you're on the fence about it, it would probably be better to wait for like the Game of the Year edition that's going to have all the DLC with it yeah. that we'll obviously see sometime next year maybe even with some additional stuff added on to it. But if you're big into Fallout, it's worth it. I mean, I can say that as a melee-focused character that's stupid, like all in space, um, it's kind of hard to take full advantage of a lot of the things that they're throwing like yeah like F- far harbor has a ton of guns and armor and all space is a not wearing armor big power fist weapon kind of motherfucker so it's like well eh, you know i'm not really in a position to take advantage of this but if you are if you've been playing you have a character that has intelligence and science and charisma and that kind of stuff um i can see how it'd be okay the writing's okay the writing's so so they really double down you know, on in far harbor on the whole synth thing which is why i posted on facebook that synths can all go fuck themselves yeah. because there's a synth in there that i'm just like i you, you son of a bitch i will say um since the the mod support has come on xbox one i've been like really tempted to to load to ball, fire it back up to fire it back up so uh-huh. i can get the the macho claws uh, <laughs> uh mod yeah. Where it's just the death clause as Macho Man. Yep. Because, um, you know, why not? Because why not? I saw, I was looking at a thing that had a bunch of mods where it was it was squid armor. And yeah. it was just a bunch of little squids that were like sitting on top of people's heads yeah. and shoulders and stuff. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, there's also one where you can change dog meat into cat meat. <laughs> um, and then also there's one where you can just spawn cats. Well... In Wasteland Workshop, you actually can set these traps uh, where you can actually trap like cats or death claws or Brahmin or things like that, or even raiders. Well, no, there are there are no cats in Fallout. Yes, sir. Oh, there are. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. There's a subplot in one of the vaults where you have to go find somebody's cat, oh. and there's actually a trap oh, that's right. where you that's can right. yeah. catch cats and you can make them friendly and hang around your your place yeah. if you want to. Um, that stuff. I forgot all, about that. So yeah. I mean, you know, uh, so much of the stuff that you're getting from here is. Like, it's great if you're really into the tertiary stuff. I don't feel like any of these DLCs, again, I'm I'm a little bit biased because I like Fallout 3 better than Fallout 4. But when I look at the Fallout 3 DLC between Operation Anchorage, The Pit, um, Point Lookout, Mothership Zeta, and uh, the, um, I forget the last one where you go fight the Enclave. All of those, I felt like, were better, longer DLC. Like, The Pit is still such a great piece of downloadable content. Yeah. Um, you know, Far Harbor is a lot like Point Lookout, but Point Lookout is a little bit grimier, dirtier than that is. So I don't know. They're all right. Um, but I would say that, you know, if you're like, oh, man, are they the best DLCs? No, they're not the best. Like they don't they don't stack up to things like uh, the Shadow Broker, Larry okay. the Shadow Broker, or like uh, the Bioshock 2 uh, whatever that Minerva's yeah. Den, right? Yeah. You know, they aren't like the best DLCs. Hell, they don't even really stack up to, in my opinion, a lot of the Skyrim DLCs, like that one that takes you to, all the way to Morrowind, where you get yeah. a huge amount of Morrowind to deal with. Um, they don't add a lot more to the game, at least from what I saw. So feel free in the comments to tell me how wrong I am, but eh, whatever. All right, mail at ragesite.com is the email address, and our first question this week comes in from Julio who says, hey, Jeff and John, happy almost E3, that time of year when companies show us the newest and latest games to come in the following years, and only to be saddened when you realize that only two-fifths of of those games actually deliver what they're showing, uh, while the rest is a bunch of lies and false hype. So I have two questions. First is, what are you most excited for at E3? What games are you hoping uh, that show up and gets you hyped for? Uh, I'm personally interested in more info on Final Fantasy 15. It's been seven years since Versus 13 was canceled, and it's been a year since 15 was announced. I can't wait anymore to be overjoyed or disappointed, man. Uh, also, total weeaboo question, but what are some games that you are sad or confused um, that never got localized stateside? 
uh, Yakuza 1 through 5, and the soon-to-be 0 got localized and translated, but for some reason, the Yakuza 1 and 2 HD never did. Uh, I had to order it like a weeb and not understand anything that was going on. Anyway, thanks for answering my questions. Julio. Um, I don't know that I actually have an answer for the localization thing. I don't know that I'm as tapped into games that never got yeah. brought over here. Um, the Fire Pro, like a lot of the Fire Pro wrestling games. Oh. Or, or the Nintendo 64 uh, wrestling games that were made by uh, Aki uh, in Japan. Like those things are like uh, the fucking best. Like yeah. They're, like you, it's like a lot of people like to say, oh, WrestleMania 2000 or WWE No Mercy or. Or, you know, WF No Mercy were like the best, the pinnacle of wrestling games. They've never topped that. Uh -huh. It's like, no, no, there's a, there's a Japanese wrestling game made the same company, same engine. Yeah. That has like 20 times the roster and it's like the fucking best wrestling game ever. Cool. Like, I, I really wish that that got brought over. That got brought over. You did. I, I just, I guess I don't run into as many like uh, previews for things that don't get brought over. Yeah. Uh, most of what are, most of the, the pool that I flop around in is the domestic release stuff anyway. I mean, the so. only other thing would be like the, I think there was one of the PSP Valkyrie Chronicle games that never got brought over. State was it side. three? Yeah. Because two got released yeah, here. Two got released here. But, three... but I don't think three did. Okay. And I, I still wish that both of them would get an HD treatment and get brought over for like a console instead of the fucking handhelds. But yeah. you know, you yeah, know, there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then as far as what we're looking forward to in E3, I feel like this is going to be a question that keeps coming up. It, yeah, uh, it always comes so, up. Uh, um, truthfully, Ages of Mayhem, I already saw the trailer for that. I don't care. E3 doesn't exist to me. <laughs> like, go fuck yourself. Um, you know, I, I talked to Matt Frank about this, of saying um, that I... Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to talk about Dead Rising 4. Uh, oh, the leak about the poster. Yeah. yeah. Dead Rising 4, I'm actually excited. I am really excited about Dead Rising uh, the 4. The things I've heard about it, it seems to, there's a lot of mixed information because there's also been some leaked screenshots. Uh -huh. um, but apparently Frank West may or may not be the main protagonist again. Oh, he's a war journalist. And, and there's also some theories that Dead Rising 4 is a reimagining of the first Dead Rising. Great. Um, but that all the protagonists from all the previous games are in it. Mm -hmm. Like Chuck Green is there. Uh, and then the two characters from Dead Rising 3 are also there. Oh, cool. Um, and that if you play, you can play up to four player co-op mm -hmm. and the, you know, basically the second player is Chuck Green, the third player is the dude from three and the fourth uh, he's player just is Chuck Maverick to me. Yeah, and, then the, and then the fourth <laughs> character is the, Chuck's daughter, oh, you know, okay. grown up daughter. Like there's also oh, that from that, the, uh, like the post, uh, Dead Rising yeah, 2 yeah, DLC. The, the really fucked up, like, Capcom, like, super mega also turbo remix no, no, edition. No, 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 because they had, they had, uh, they had pre-release Dead Rising 2 prequel demo on the Xbox 360, but then there was, was it Case West? Oh, yeah, Case That was, West. like, the post law the post, yeah. uh, well, yeah. Or was it him and... It Chuck was Green? Him and Chuck Green. Oh, okay. So it was him and Chuck Green. Well, and then also there was the, uh, for for 3, there was the the Super Turbo Remix, whatever right, 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 right. thing, yeah, where yeah, you yeah. could actually play as all four of those characters. Right, right. Um, so there's there's some theories that, that it may actually be a continuation, and it's actually all four of those characters going back to the town of Willamette, uh -huh. where the mall is. Uh-huh. For some reason, they all four have to go back to that town, and it's not just the mall; it's the entire, it's the entire town. That would yeah. be cool. That'd be um, very cool. But, th but like I said, there, there's too many mixed up information. Like I want actual solid information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know what it is because I'm I, I I love me some Dead Rising. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to look through. This is actually just a list of stuff that's actually like kind of been um been confirmed. Oh, there was actually uh there was a brief trailer that I didn't put into the mix today of another Mafia Three. Uh, trailer. Oh, yeah. I really. I didn't know there was. Yeah, I didn't see uh, that. It's it's like a it's like a teaser for the trailer or the teaser for the E three trailer. Okay. Um, Mafia three. It looks great. Um, I'm looking through this. I'm seeing Last Guardian. I'd like to. I'd like to see some more of that. Um, Zelda Lawbreakers. Eh, you know. Um, there's some stuff. Uh, honestly, I talked to Matt Frank about this, and um, I told him the same thing that I will tell you, Julio, and that is that um. I am always interested in the games that I don't know are there yet. Yeah. So the stuff that they're keeping under wraps until we're watching a press conference, it's like, oh, what? That yeah, was incredible. It's the, it's the unknowns. Yeah. 
those are the ones that I'm always looking forward to. Uh, this, yeah, I remember this. The near um, Autonoma from last year was. Uh, I'm interested in seeing more about that because it looked kind of crazy. There's Neo. Yeah, I don't know that I can think of anything else. I'm sure there's other stuff. Scalebound. Do you think they'll show any Scalebound there? Uh, they might. Yeah. Do you think we're gonna see a lot of um, of Zelda? From Nintendo? Yeah. Yeah? I mean, that's... All, I mean, I mean they primarily sta- what they're seeing. They stated that. all they're showing is Zelda and Pokemon. Mm. Like, that, that's it. Like, yeah. you know, mind you, I mean, I, their Treehouse thing is going to show, like, a bunch of indie stuff and whatever. But, like, the things that are Nintendo that they're talking about are just those three things. Yeah. Titanfall 2. I'm actually yeah. interested in Titanfall 2. Uh, oh, what's the, um, the, 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 uh, the pirate one from last year? The multiplayer pirate one that's being developed by... Rare? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I whatever that what one is. Called. Um, yeah, I'm I'm interested in that. I love me fucking goddamn pirate games. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. Uh, all right, the next question comes in from Andrew, who says, "Greetings, Jeff and John. Back when I first played Bloodborne, I came across a section where I was simply unable to continue. I couldn't even go into the room to attempt to progress. No, it wasn't a bug. It was an arachnid. The giant spider room stopped me dead, as I have some mild arachnophobia." Um, for the most part, I can handle the smaller ones. I squirm and hate every second of it, but I can fight them. When I reached the giant spider room, I just froze, said, fuck. It just stood there for maybe five to ten minutes while I built up the confidence. Eventually, I ran into the room, and as soon as they all started coming down, I went, nope, and backed out as fast as I could. I lured the smaller ones out so I could deal with them alone. Now, I'm not sure uh, if you've used that tactic, but if you do... Uh, When the giant spider gets right at the door and stares at you until you get within range, its whole head fills the door and it just stares. I literally put my character in camera facing the wall because if the character could still see it, it would freak me out more. I essentially stayed like this for over an hour while I waited for someone to answer my co-op bell and kill this thing for me. I thought that I wouldn't be able to finish the game. Eventually, a glorious white knight came to my rescue and I showered him with bows. Um, Now, though, I'm worried that I won't be able to play through the game in the future once the player base drops off. So my question is, what type of enemy would you remove from a game or games if you could whether they be annoying overused freaky etc thanks andrew that spider room still fucking bloodborne spiders are the worst yeah they are that room is fucking you just like look at it and you're like fuck you miyazaki just go fuck yourself with this bullshit yeah uh gross um so what do you think john what uh, type of enemy would you remove from a game annoying overused freaky etc I don't think I'd remove. I, don't, I can't think of any yeah. enemies like a, a yeah. I, um, I don't like it when games put invincible enemies in. Yeah, I guess. Um, it's uh, it's funny because I was talking. You remember on um, oh, or it might have been. Uh, you remember when we were talking on um, uh, uh, Max Payne, where uh, one of the fans wrote in and said that like, oh man, I totally like Alien Isolation, right? Yeah, um, and then they actually came back and commented. And they were like, "Oh no, now I see what you're what you're doing. Fuck that alien." Um, I remember also very much the Resident Evil Four regenerator enemies. Uh, yeah, really pain in the ass until you get the scope where you can see where their the points are that you have to shoot them to actually kill them off uh, full dead. Uh, I can honestly say that um, it's not an enemy, but every time I'm playing a game and there's a swamp, I'm like. Oh, Jesus. I don't know what it is, John. I don't like swamps. I don't like the swamp level in any game. I like the forest. I like the city. I like the tundra, the desert, whatever. I don't like the, I don't like the swamps. What about just general gameplay mechanics? Do you think of anything that, that comes to mind that you're not a big fan of? Well, I mean, we all hate lock picking. I was so glad when I went back to play The Witcher 3, I realized about 10 hours in that I was like, oh, man, I'm, this game doesn't have any lock picking in it. That's fucking great. Um, unfortunately, I was, man, I was doing pretty good on, on Witcher 3 and then Fallout 4. I had to get Almond Space ready to play Fallout 4. And so I kind of just was like, oh, right. I enjoy playing Fallout 4 way more. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, of any kind of uh, time limit either. I don't like to feel rushed in my video games. So I think it's one of the reasons why the original, um, what's that? Uh, you drive the giant mechs and you're on the ice planet, Lost Planet? Oh, Lost Planet, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Where you had that the, the, the heat meter that would go down yeah. if you were outside. I don't like that. I was just like, eh, I, don't, I don't like being rushed. I like to be able to stop and look around and do stuff. So I can get that. Anytime that a game does that, I'm not really the biggest fan in the world. 
Uh, all right, this next question comes in from Daniel, who says, Hello again, Ragers. Uh, we know many people are declaring that E3 is dying or is uh, on its way to extinction as more major companies pull out of E3 and do their own events. Uh, in the age where you have the internet news, reliable uh, live streaming services, and competing events like PAX dominating the circles, it's easy to see this point of view. However, I'd like to ask you all, where do you think E3 is headed? Will it become like CES and still be the same but have declining numbers? Will it revitalize itself in a few years, or will another event take its place? Thanks and take care, Daniel. I have uh, an opinion about this. Okay. Uh, I think there's two different things that happen at E3 that yes. are going to be divided. One is um I'm pretty sure you you check me on this if I'm wrong John, right? But there's a fair contingent of people at E3 that are like companies pitching their games to retail sellers. Yeah. And I feel like all that stuff is just boardroom meetings. So you might have a, a centralized location for like a trade show and not and not just like companies pitching like games but also like game peripherals and and, right. and new types of consoles right. and, and other electronics that may also play games you know things like that like uh, yeah so i feel like a lot of that stuff is happening you know upstairs at the convention center behind in the in the meeting rooms right so i almost feel like there's you could you can envision a future where um e3 breaks those two things in half like you have what they tried to turn E3 into, which was the, like, invite only, we're just talking to upper-tier muckety-mucks. Yeah. And then, like, have the other side. I, I think that – I think I've said this before, but I would like to see the other half of E3 become something like um, South by Southwest, like a week-long multi-location gaming expo type of thing that's not all okay. in the convention center. Yeah. Um, I honestly, though, feel that, like, you know, Sony, Nintendo's already, they, I feel like they started this, right, by basically going, like, we're just going to have a Nintendo Direct. We're not going to pay for the fucking bullshit because we live in an age where you're going to actually reach more people with your stream. You know you're going to reach more people with your stream, and you don't have to rely on journalists to tape that stream and then put it up on the Internet, right? Um, So... I already feel like the big companies are going to branch out and it's just well we already know they're already doing their own thing right they're already doing their own independent stuff they're already halfway there um I just feel like it's going to take somebody to look at the amount of money that they spend on making these booths at E3 and go you know we could do like four individual fan events all year long for the cost that it takes us to do this one dumb thing in LA where all the journalists have to come in and it's a shit ton of money and there's all these like parties and stuff. Yeah. We could have like a whole Sony three day long event. And I mean, they already, and if you actually look at it, I mean, Sony already has the, the Sony experience expo or whatever. It right. Is. They also have their little Sony thing that happens before E3. Yeah. Um, you know, same with Microsoft. They have their little Microsoft thing that happens before E3. Is it a press conference? Um, not really a press conference, but it's kind of like a thing where like they actually, because they actually did have a thing where they invite a bunch of people out to look at windows 10 and, Oh yeah. Um, Mm-hmm. A bunch of stuff, you know, in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of stuff. Like, they kind of have, like, their own... Everyone kind of ha- already has their own little individual events. Sure. Um, and I think you're going to... I do think you're going to see a lot of companies having more... I mean, if you really want to talk about it, Blizzard was the first to do it. Mm-hmm. They basically went, fuck it. We're having BlizzCon. Fuck E3. We'll do our own announcements there. Quake World? Quake World, too. You're Quake right. World you're right. probably Quake first, World. but... Yeah. Quake World, BlizzCon, you're going to start seeing... I think you're going to start seeing more of that stuff become more predominant. Yeah. Well, well hell, there was a story I, I dumped this week that was that Activision is, is bringing back their thing where you could buy the, their Call of Duty event where you can buy yeah. your way in. They have tournaments. They show you the new games and blah, blah, blah. It just feels like the money that they're spending at E3 would be better spent. Like, it used to be a big thing, and it's still a big thing, but look at where we are. We're like three days out from E3, and we already had... There were there were years of E3 where what we just covered could have been like all the big announcements yeah. back in the old days, right? Um, you're probably better off while people are getting hyped up for E3 just putting out your announcements. So I don't know. I get the feeling I don't know how much it actually costs them, and I don't know how much like if the city of L.A. gives them 
like tax breaks or gives the the game companies yeah. any kind of break because they're bringing in because you know what you know how much it costs to get a fucking hotel room in downtown LA for a week it's fucking expensive yeah I, I've never tried because of that it's fucking it's terrifically expensive so like they're bringing in a shitload of money for all these people to spend a week there and I'm thinking that most of those people I mean you know last year and the year before we did E3 from from Austin, right? Yeah. I mean, just, you and I sit down, do five huge ass podcasts, right? Yeah. Um, I forgot we're going to have to do five huge ass. Yeah, podcasts. I got to remind. <laughs> Damn it! Oh, um, next week. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I just feel like it's less cost effective now than it ever has been because you can reach more people with a YouTube video than you can, yeah. you know, going to E three. So I'd like to see it become more open to the public, like PAX is, where they just rent a thing out, and they're like, the fans, the word of mouth we're going to get off of fans that we let in is going to be better than any, you know, standing up on stage, doing that really stilted, you know, let's well, bring Well, there was out. that one year that they did let fans into E3, didn't they? Oh, they're, they're, I think you can always buy a pass to E3 if you want to. Yeah. They're like $500 a pop. Um, and this year they're letting... A certain amount of fans in as yeah. well. Uh, you know, there's a, there's always been a contingency of people in there, which in some ways is actually detrimental to the experience because you know when I went there, you don't want to have to stand in line. You don't want to spend. A, you don't want to have to spend. Okay, the first time that I went to E3, I spent half of the first day of E3 in line to play the Wii U. Yeah, and I lined up before they opened the doors. It was just like exhibitor badge people that had lined up to do that shit. And I stood in line like for four hours waiting to play the Wii U. That was a totally terrible waste of time. It was a huge waste of time and effort. And then when they got up to the front, they showed me a bunch of games, none of which actually came out. Like there was one that was like a pirate ship. And there was one that was like a Zelda thing. And, you know, I don't think any of those things actually ever made it to release. Um but I feel like they could do a lot better by just having their own thing. I don't know. You know, okay. yeah, Microsoft be better coming renting out the uh, the um, Austin Convention Center and just setting up rows and rows and rows of Halo and be like, "Come play Halo. Come on in." Then tell your friends about it. Uh, let's see. This next question comes in from Mike. Mike says. Hey, Sexy Jeff and Sexy John. My name is Mike, and I've been listening and watching for several years. I listen to you guys while I work, clean, cook, and do the shopping. Anyway, I uh, heard that your Patreon pledges were dipping, so I raised mine to help out Jeff as much as I can. Thank you very much. Uh, My only question would be, do you have any more stories about the gym or dating that I can hear? I loved listening to your gym story about jumping into a high chlorine-filled pool and burning your skin off. Thanks for always being yourselves. Sincerely, Mike. From Canada, I, I don't have any gym stories. Give me dating, good dating stories. No, no, no. Son of a bitch! I am the wrong person for this email because <laughs> I I don't go to the gym. First of all, uh-huh. uh, second of all, um, my dating experience is is like been like three people my entire life. Okay, and they were actually very pleasant dates. All of them. They were all good dates. Yeah. So I mean, it's you know, yeah. I can't um, really. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how funny this is, but I don't know. It'll maybe give people a little bit of uh, uh, a, a little insight into uh, Jeff's dating career. But um, back in the day, and we're talking oh six, seven years ago, uh, I was doing the Match. dot com thing. Um, it wasn't going very well. I still online dating is just a hellish nightmare. But I went. And I went on a date with this woman, and we went to um, – there's a place down on South Congress here in Austin, Texas, called the Continental Club. You've ever been, been, ever been to the Continental I've, Club? I think I've been there once. Yeah, it's right by Amy's and Zen and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I used to go there all the time, but um, they actually uh, uh, opened a, pl- a bar – upstairs from it called the Continental Gallery, where it's like a big, it's just a big long hallway, and it's nice, it's all decked out, they usually have art on the walls, they got one tiny little bar, and then they've got like a stage on one side where they play jazz. It's actually a really cool place, you know, muted lights, and you get some cocktails, and you sit on these couches, talk to, you know, a person. So um, I'd gone there with a friend of mine, and I was like, oh, this would be the perfect place to take a date. So I actually, um, I went with this girl, and we went to Wero's, uh, which is just a couple, bl- uh, like a, across the street and half a block up. And we had Mexican food, and it was very jittery. And then I was like, well, you want to go get a drink? And she was like, yeah, sure. So we went up, and um, we had a couple of drinks. And I had actually had to park my car down these back roads, like over in that. Okay. Because this was before they converted all of Congress. 
the, the street that we're talking about is like a, it has all of these crazy shops up and down both sides. And it's like a, uh, it's like a, uh, two lanes on each side with a divider, like a, a chicken lane in the middle. Um, and it used to be that the sides were like sidewalks, but at some point they put a bunch of parking spaces in where you have to like, you park and then you have to back out into traffic. It's horrible. But anyway, at the time there were no parking spaces. So I just had to go down the street and park in, I, I parked like a few blocks away and then walked out there. So anyway, I'm there with this girl. I don't even remember her name at this point. We're having a good time. It was, everything was good. I was like, Hey man, this match.com thing, maybe it'll work out like this girl. We're getting along. We had a nice dinner. We're having some drinks. We'll listen to some jazz music. It's kind of cool. Um, you know, I didn't think anything was going to happen. Um, but anyway, we're having a good time. And at the end of the night, we walked out. And I was like, hey, I had a really good time. Oh, I had a really good time, too. And it's like, oh, do you want to you maybe do something next week? And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do something next week. And I don't know. That could have been total bullshit. It could have just been that she was like, yes, get away from me, fucker. Like, go somewhere else. But I was walking, getting ready to walk back to my car. And she's like, well, I'm parked right here. Do you want to ride to your car? And I was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm just down the block. And she's like, yeah, get in. I'll, you know, I'll take you to your car. And I was like, well, this is a good sign. She's not you know, punching me or macing me or doing anything terrible. You got in the car, she chloroformed you, and you ended up naked in the desert. That's what happened. And then I don't know. I only have one kidney to this day, one kidney, one testicle. She took one of each. She said, you got two. You don't need both. No. Uh, <laughs> um, so we're in, this, we're in the, one of these parking garages. It's a bunch of, uh, like, concrete. And... Okay, so I can see this happen in slow motion. We're both a little bit at sauced. She's got this really beautiful, like it was those new American muscle cars, right? Like the oh, Mustang or whatever. No. She turns on the car. She looks behind her. She's backing out of the parking space. And as she's backing out, her the front of her car is going to hit this concrete column oh, she's backing no. out at too much of an angle and the front of her car is going to end up smacking into this concrete column here's where it's like fucking max pain to uh slow motion like comes down on me right like yeah. i can see it happening but i don't know what to do i don't know this person john like we just went on a date and the last thing that i want to do is like because okay if you and i were in the car and you were doing this, and you're about to hit this, I'd be like, stop, John, stop! Stop now! Yeah. You know? But I don't know this girl. Like, I don't want to scream in her face, but that's the only way. Like, you don't know the other person, how they're going to react, yeah. right? You want to make sure that they don't do something. So I don't want to scream in her face. <laughs> it's only getting closer. Remember, this is all happening just like in a, in a nanosecond, but my mind is just like, Bleh. I don't want to scream at her. I don't want to grab her. I'm taught, you know, don't put your fucking hands on a person, especially just a lady that you just met, right? You know, um, like I can't grab the wheel out of her hand. Yeah. So the, I probably ended up doing the worst thing that I could. You took your pants off? I took my pants off. I just, I whipped it, I whipped it out and she was like, that's it. But she didn't hit the, no. So what I ended up doing was going like, hey, and this was not enough to make her stop. And she was like, what? And then she, her car hit the post. And I know, I know that what happened was that she, I was trying to get her attention to make her stop. I was like, hey, stop. And in that moment, she looked over to me to be like, what is this guy talking about? And I think that she thought that she wasn't going, that she was fine until I distracted her. And then she hit this thing with her car because it was like we had a nice time and immediately it was like a fucking ice shower. It was like a bucket of ice was just thrown in there. And she was like, fuck. And I was like, I'm sorry. I was trying to tell you to stop, which I shouldn't have said. I should have just shut up. I should have just not said anything and then have it be like, oh, fuck. What the hell? That was crazy. I didn't even see that happening. Oh, man. Because as soon as that happened, it was done. Like, we were done So She was like, it's fine. But she said it in that way that I knew that it wasn't fine. And so then she drove me back to my car. I mean, her car still drove. She just fucked up the front of her car. She drove me back to my car. She dropped me off. I was like, well, I had a nice time. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she fucking drives off. And then I messaged her like two more times. I was like, so how about you want to do it? Thing. And she's like, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not. Well, I think the first one was just like, uh, I don't know. I have to think about it. And then it was just like, no. And yeah, to this day, I'm like, if I had just kept my mouth shut or screamed in her face or so, I don't know what the right move is. John, what was the right move in that situation? <laughs> like I know. I had, I had like three drinks in me and I was also all keyed up and nervous because a pretty girl, I was having a good time with a pretty girl. And then it was just like, well, shit.
And that that was probably there's the other match.com thing where I went on a date with a girl and we ended up spending like ten hours. Like no, it was like um I think it's like eight hours. Like talking and hanging out. We went from like a coffee shop to a bar and then we're hanging yeah. out in a bar and we're just talking, talking, talking. And I was like, This is great. This is this is fantastic. Like who spends eight hours with I mean it was like you know, she wasn't just mooching drinks off me. It was fine. And then, you know, and then I messaged her and I was like, hey, I had a really good time. She's like, yeah, no. I'm like, that's weird. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I will say. I don't know. To kind of add on. I mean, the the most weird thing in this, again, it's not even a thing, uh, is the one a date that I would say that didn't end well. Yeah. Was uh, it was actually an okay date. Uh, got a flat tire, like, right in front of her house. Right. So I was like, all right, well, I got to change this tire and i started changing the tire and she's hanging out there with me and we're just talking and i'm changing the tire and her mom comes out yeah and this is i'm like this is right after high school right um her mom comes out and she's like everything okay i was like i was like oh hi ma'am um you know i, I did the nice things like i i shake your hand but um you know yeah. i'm hand. changing this tire sure uh, i got a flat tire we were just bringing your daughter back home uh you know it's very nice to meet you my name is john blah blah, blah. very nice you know like you're supposed to do sure um went back to changing the tire and then She's like, all right, well, I'm going to go back inside. Um, are you okay out here? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, we're, you know, it's just changing a tire. Yeah. And I was almost done anyways. And then as we're walking in, I hear her mom go, he seems really nice. I like him more than your, the other guys you've dated. Mm -hmm. And I just immediately went, I'm never going to hear from this girl ever again. <laughs> and sure enough, anytime I, uh, it, it, like the few times I tried, you know, getting in contact with her again after that, no. You know, one time this is a this is a funky this is a weird story. It's like as soon as I got the parental uh, approval, I was like, "Oh fuck!" So one time, so this is a this is a real strange story. It probably is going to make me sound like a weirdo creep, but you guys got to remember that I was like seventeen when this happened. This is you know before twenty year old Jeff. Right, right, right. Yeah, which twenty year old Jeff and teenage Jeff are two different beasts, and then twenty year old Jeff and thirty year old Jeff two significantly different beasts. In two years, I'll be 40. I'm assuming that I'm just going to then become like old man Jeff. You mean you're, you're not already old man porch. Jeff? No, I'm just going to talk like this all the time. You don't? Hello, young lady. Get off of my porch, you harlot. Um, no, I remember there was a weird... This was weird, because this is back in the day when... Um, before This is pre-internet, right? So this is what you had to realize. Once upon a time, when I was like 16 years old, uh, I was in driver's ed. And the way that driver's ed worked uh, it, where I was was you got in this car with this with the teacher, right? He would pick up like two or three students depending on the lesson, right? So he drove to your house. He'd pick you up. And then you're driving. you pick somebody else up and you pick somebody else up. So there was this one time where the guy, he drove out to my house and then he drove out and he picked up. And there's this girl. I don't remember her name. She was redhead, just curly hair. I don't remember. Um there's this girl that I went to high school with, and I had, like, a class or two with her, and but I never really knew her very well. Um, I had this one driver's ed lesson with her. I had this one or two classes with her, but we seemed to get along okay. And there was one day where I was just like, you know what? Like, I want to go on a date with this lady. So I knew her name, right? Um, and I knew approximately where she lived because the driver's ed guy had picked us up, but that was, like, a year before this thing went down so i got off the phone book and this is in the days of the phone book right i knew her last name and i knew kind of what the zip code was because my friend that i was in a band with lived in the same neighborhood and so i like went down until i started finding zip codes with this last name and then i like got out a map and started looking at where the streets were and i finally found one that was like that street um and probably was the right one and i basically cold called this girl's house wow and was like and the person who picked up the phone was like her mom and i was like hello ma'am um hi my name is jeff is so and so Cause I, I knew her name yeah. i don't want to be like hey is that redhead uh, is, uh, yeah. is there a fiery red you got a fiery redheaded daughter put her on the line no do you got any daughters? What any of daughters? How you doing, lady? <laughs> oh, what about you? What's your situation? You want to go redhead? You want to go on a date with a crazy person? <laughs> um, so I asked for her, and she came to the phone. And you got to remember that this was like a year after high school, and I was like, "Hi, so and so." I don't remember. I really, honestly, don't remember her name because this was twenty years ago. Hi, Janine. This is Jeff uh, Schusler from high school. Um, 
do you do you do you know who I am? <laughs> and she was like, "Oh yeah, I remember you." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." So how's it going? And she's like, "Oh, it's going good." I'm like, "Oh, what are you what are you up to today?" And she's like, "Oh, it's fine." I'm like, "So you know, I uh, I was just I remember we had a class together one time, and I was thinking uh, maybe you'd like to go out to dinner sometime." I didn't do it all in this weird like yeah. Brooklyn uh, like weird sleaze bag accent. Yeah. You know, I was very nervous because it was the days of telephones, and she was like, "You know," she thought about it. And she was like. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I think I could. Yeah, all right. I'm I'm good with that. I know who you are. You're not a stranger. And I was like, okay, um, can I pick it? And I had our address because I had the phone number out of the phone book. I was like, can I pick you up uh, Friday at 7? Maybe we go out to eat. Maybe we go to, go to a movie or something. And she's like, yeah, all right. Um, sure. And I got to say um, that when I had forgotten about this story until we just started telling these stories, this is one of the weirder things that ever happened. It was a pretty nice date. That's um, good. And we had a pretty nice time. And then I don't think I ever called her again. Like, I think we had a pretty nice time. But at the time, I was, like, 19 and stupid. And so I was like, oh, man, she's so boring. As opposed to, you know, 30 and stupid. 38 and stupid. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Uh, But it was just, like, the setup for that was a thing that, like, when when I look back on it, like, telling the story, it makes – it sounds so strange. (laughs) But – yeah, it totally worked. And in those particular day, and I mean, you know, the back before the internet, you'd just be like, "Hey, man, do you know that girl, Sandra? Do you know her phone number?" And be like, "Do you know the girl uh, with the hair like this?" <laughs> yes, exactly. And hold up the photo, yes, exactly. the drawn photo. Yes, yeah. Oh, that's Ramona Flowers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you'd be like, "Can you give me your phone number?" And then you just cold call. I did, that was the way that sometimes you had to do it back in the '90s, man. There was no internet. There was no social media. Sometimes you just had to call a girl up out of the blue and be like, "Hi, we have." We have physics two together. Would you like to go see Waterworld in the theater with me, please? Oh God, Waterworld! <laughs> I saw uh, Waterworld in the theater on a date. It was terrible. I, I will admit, uh, not Waterworld. Romeo and Juliet uh-huh. had to go see it for a school like cr- extra credit thing. Like the the okay. yeah school like this is when the the Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah, the Baz Luhrmann. Yeah, Baz Luhrmann. Yeah. Um, it was in theaters, and they're like, oh well, go see the theater. If you bring in your ticket stub, you'll get like extra credit oh, okay. on your next test or oh, whatever. Okay. So it's like, all right, cool. So I just go on my own. Like I just, I ask my mom, she can drop me off. She'll pick me up. You know, it's not a big deal. Sure. She drops me off. I go there. And as I'm walking up the steps to the seat, I hear John, is that you? Mm-hmm. And I see, you know, a girl from same English class, right? Her boyfriend. Yeah. Another couple who I have no fucking clue who they are. Sure. And like, like a, like three other people. Yeah. Like it's an odd number of grouping of people, but it's clear they're all together. Right. Um. And I was like, they're yeah. all fucking. No, they're just like, oh, yeah. And it's like they're like, oh, why don't you join us? I was like, all right, cool. And then it's like, you can be this person's date. And I'm like, what? 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 <laughs> this person who did. It's like, wow. Way to call out the girl who came without a date. Wow. Yeah, that is a little. That is like. Uh... That's like. Hi, I don't know you. She's like, I don't know you either. I don't yeah. really want this to be a date. And I'm like, don't worry. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, all right. Anyway, let's move on from awkward dating to uh, another question from Joseph. who says, hello, Jeff and John. I want to thank you for your recommendation of the game Dark Souls. After he- years of hearing you talk about it on the Loading Bar Rage site, I finally caved and bought it on Steam a few weeks ago. And man, oh, man, am I glad I did. It uh, very well may be my favorite game of the last 15 to 20 years. One of the things I like the most about it is how it tells its story. Instead of shoving it in your face, it leaves much of the narrative up to player interpretation based on interaction with the environment and PCs. I feel like a lot of AAA games today seem to put too much emphasis on their story, usually at the expense of gameplay. As a result, they end up churning out bland and uninteresting schlock like uh, the latest Quantum Break game. The latest Quantum Break game? Okay. And The Order 1886. I don't know if those two belong in the same sentence, but whatever. Uh, My question is, why do you think most companies today are sacrificing that crucial element that makes video games so entertaining and interesting in favor of focusing on an overly produced and convoluted narratives uh, that overshadow and even dumb down the gameplay? Your friend forever from the multiverse and beyond, Joseph. Hmm. Don't know how to answer that. Yeah? You want to take a shot? No. No, I don't know how to answer that. I just... I. I I feel like it's I mean I feel like it's it's just it comes down to that thing that we talk about all the time on on Rage Select which is I feel like a lot of developers look at games and want to make movies. They want their games to have the success of movies, so they focus on movie aspects 
that could be shoved into their games. Um, I feel like the Order 1886 was a perfect example. Yeah. Uh, I also feel like we also, uh, that part of it is also due to how old games as a medium are, that we yeah. have genres that people feel like they can slot a game into without having to come up with anything without a new or interesting take on that gameplay. Like, yeah. It was especially egregious, I feel, in the last generation where you had so many cover-based shooters that were just bland cover-based shooters because we knew how to do a cover-based shooter. F- FPSs suffer from this all the time. Well, it's like if you even look at, like, uh, in this kind of, a lot of uh, licensed games for a while there. They, mm-hmm. they were just like Captain America. It's just Batman Arkham with mm-hmm. uh you know a new you know it's that that gameplay that that fighting mechanic with you know yeah. uh you know with its own game green lantern was just god of war um green lantern was yeah well, thor was too thor was also god of war yeah. you know it's just it's like a lot of companies they went ah let's take that mechanic and slap this on it be called a day sure which there's nothing you know the thing is that there's nothing wrong like i'm not saying that every single game has to be a brand new thing that I've never seen before. Yeah. There's something to be said about making a game, um, making a third-person action game, right? That's just a supremely good third-person action game. I think that the phenomena that you're thinking of, though, is when a company makes a third-person action game that doesn't end up being super fun and then tries to paper that over with a story or a multiverse or a super media tie-in with a comic and a thing and blah, 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 blah. Like... I feel uh, it's one of the things that I feel like we've seen a lot from Assassin's Creed yeah. is that the Assassin's Creed gameplay, like in the last one in Syndicate, was okay, uh, but that they tried to make up the difference with having this cinematic, very cinematic storyline instead of starting from a point of like the gameplay has to be super fun first. And it's it's a very difficult creative challenge because um, – like I've read blogs about saying the first thing that you want to do is you want a fun alpha gameplay loop. You yeah. want to focus on the gameplay loop first and then develop the story on top of that because at the end of the day, a good story is not going to save a boring game from being boring. Yeah. Now, and I think a, a Order 1886 is a prime example of that. Absolutely. Because it, that story on paper is actually really interesting yeah. and you want to know more about it. But Fuck, is that game boring as shit? Yep. Now, that's actually, it's funny, though, that now that I think about what I just said, that actually flies directly in the face of a lot of times um, when I've said that I like a good story more than anything else. But if your gameplay, the thing is that I feel like if you have an exceptional story and medium gameplay, that could be a great combination. Yeah. But if your gameplay is boring, you're, no matter how good the story is, it's going to end up feeling like a slog. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also kind of vice versa if you're i mean if your story is shit it not necessarily you could have the best gameplay in the world and it may not it may it's going to hurt that a little bit it, a little bit i feel like it's a lot easier though to get away with a game that has an excellent excellent gameplay loop but a poor storyline than it yeah. is the other way around yeah i guess like, you, you know pac-man, pac-man championship edition dx is a fucking fantastic game with no story right yeah, well that's different i mean there's a difference between no story and a shitty story true true uh, I, I feel like, again, going back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the podcast, that you can slot this particular thing into a lot of Ubisoft games. That uh, Far Cry Primal was like this, where the story, the gameplay was not... I didn't feel like the gameplay had enough oomph that over time... I You know what? You know what the other problem is? You know what the other problem is, Joseph? Um, something that I've been noticing a lot lately is that there's too many games that are too long for no good reason. Yeah, They're too long without they demand an amount of patience from you without reward for a long time or they demand that you cut the game a break when and i hate that because i'm like if your game is 12 hours long but you only have eight hours of game make an eight hour game and not yeah, a 12 like hour i will game. actually say in, in regards to far cry primal had it been the size of say blood dragon oh sure it would have been perfectly fine oh if but it the been... fact that they, they they made a game that was very much Aiken to Blood Dragon, and then tried to bloat it into a full $60 game, that hurt it. Well, that's the thing, I guess, is that maybe there's some kind of backlash, or maybe they've done market research and people aren't, they're, they aren't willing to pay. I know there's a lot of people out there that consider $60 for an eight-hour game with no multiplayer to be a bad deal. They don't, they don't want to play it. You know? yeah. They figure a single-player game needs to be 12 to 14 hours long if it's going to be $60, at the bare minimum. Now, I personally think that if the game has a really good 
story and good replayability that it can be eight hours long and be sixty dollars and that's fine because I'd rather play a game that doesn't I'd rather play a game that leaves me wanting more than a game that overstays its welcome and I get tired of, which is what happens in a lot, especially on the current, these PS4, Xbox One, the new gen of yeah. systems that they've used. Like Infamous Second Son went on a little bit too long, you know? Yeah, and, I can agree with that. Um, get out no, of I hell. No, I really like that game. Oh, me too. Get Out of Hell probably should have been four-hour DLC, not, you know, eight to ten hour. Probably still wouldn't have been very good. Hell, even Watch Dogs was 16 hours. God, I know, I know I'm crapping was... on Ubisoft a lot here, but it's a prime example of that. On the other hand, GTA V was long, but I felt like I was always engaged when I was playing GTA V. Hell, even looking using the Saints Row example, uh, Saints Row 4 is not as long as any of the previous Saints Row games. It's yeah. actually considerably shorter but I think it's a tighter gameplay experience. Absolutely, yeah. Because it, well, it just keeps throwing, like it keeps throwing powers, upgrades, and interesting story beats at you constantly. Yeah. And by the time you hit the last one, you're done. The game's over. You know, uh, if you still want to run around in the world, you can. But yeah. the story's done. Yeah. But it just consistently brings that stuff up, and I and that's great. That's what I want. I, hell, I, I, you know, get off of crapping on Ubisoft. Again, I know that a lot of people disagree with me. I thought Uncharted 4 was too long. I would have rather Uncharted 4 have been eight hours instead of like 12 to 14 hours because there was some of that stuff that I felt like you could have just cut out because I get it. He's climbing the side of the mountain. This sequence could be five minutes instead of 10 minutes. This sequence can be 10 minutes instead of 25 minutes. Tighten it up, which is I keep giving that example to South Park Stick of Truth yeah. that just went and was never dull and then when you were done it was done and that was it and it was great so uh all right let's do uh, maybe two more here um let's see this is a real quick question that i'm just gonna answer off as carl asks hey jeff you may know this well i hope so my question is is it at all possible to take a save game from a console and put it on a pc thanks carl uh, you can transfer a save game from your PS4 to a USB memory key. You can plug that memory key into your computer and see that there is a save game file on there. You can't use that save. Like, if you want to take your Fallout 4 save and put it on your P and use it on the PC, you can't. As near as I, as far as I know, you cannot do that. You can no, yeah. transfer between the two. Um, Let's see. Michael asks, hello, Jeff and John, longtime follower, first time questioner. After recently watching and loving X-Men Apocalypse, I couldn't help but notice the amount of complaints directed at the visual aesthetics of the film, particularly in the costume department. It seems many, many fans uh, clamor for a more faithful, more faithful costumes for the characters, which brings to the question. Do you think big screen versions of famous heroes should be recreated as visually close to their comic counterparts as possible? Or is there a line where things just become too ridiculous? Would you like to see Wolverine in the and blue how about hawkeye or the scarlet witch thanks for answering and rage on your loyal fan from the savage land of snow and bears michael where's the savage land of is it far cry primal is that what we're just talking about far i don't primal? know um, um i think it depends on the costume mm. like i think if you do hawk i don't think you can do hawkeye's classic costume the purple one with the h on his forehead yeah <laughs> yeah that's um, i do think his current costume is doable because they did it in F civil war that's okay. it's it, the, the difference mm -hmm. between his costume and civil with the movie Civil War and his current costume yeah. is that in the comics his costume is brighter purple. Oh, okay, like yeah. there's no difference other than that. Civil War actually, I mean, you know, when I look at the costuming for Civil War, everybody looked pretty good. Uh, yeah. I mean, the only real difference that they've made in that one is Cap, um, and they just took the little wings and glued them to the side of his helmet. I don't yeah. know if that's been that way in the comics. He doesn't have the chain mail like he used to the no, old school. no it's like th there's a there's I, I i do feel like there is a there's a way to do it right and a way to do it wrong like yeah there's ways where you do it and it looks great mm -hmm. and then there's ways where you do it and it doesn't look great i think the problem with the x-men is just that over the course of the x-men they've always had very seamy looking black costumes yeah. right they've never had well the first time really that they had something that wasn't samey looking black costumes was first class sure yeah yeah I Which, think that, again, was not Brian Singer. I think the costuming problem with the X-Men movies mm -hmm. is Brian Singer. Brian Singer wants real-world aesthetics. He wants – he wants he doesn't think spandex or that costumes that look similar to those older costumes work. Yeah. He's been very vocal about that. Yeah. Um, and I think when he does try to make costumes that are sort of 
similar to those older ones. He wants to make enough changes that they that, that it changes too much. Okay. Like I, I, I just I, um, I feel like you could I don't think that it would work if you did like uncanny X Men where everybody has their own costume. Yeah. Um but I do think there was a time in the nineties when I was reading X Men when Jim Lee was writing it where they like ha- or everybody had a unique costume, but they were all like blue and gold. Yeah. Uh, in the X Men, I feel like that could work. Like if you had something that wasn't just a bunch of black costumes, because I think that you know it worked real well in Civil War, right? When they were having the airport scene, right, where it was fighting each other, and you had you know Ant Man and, and Spider Man both had the red costumes. Tony Stark had the red in his armor. Scarlet Witch had red. Vision has that all that green on him. You know, Black Panther is black. You have a bunch of black costumes. Um, the problem at the end of that, I, I kind of feel like uh, in X Men uh, Apocalypse, is that at the end they all don the same black spandex costume. Like they find a bunch of costumes that are all the exact same, and they put on the exact same costumes. So it's like, well, more than that. Like it doesn't have to be exactly what the comics is, but a little bit of. I mean, because when you look at the other side, Psylocke has her own has her costume that looks like it looks like in the comics. Except it has a boob window for some reason. Yeah, uh, that was weird. Storm's costume looks good. I mean, yeah. it's the, you know the white hair and the kind of leather, and and uh, uh, Angel's is all right. I I think they they could have translated the the weird purple and the purple stripey one that he had when he was Archangel when he yeah. had the blue blue skin could have worked, but. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it's just going to depend on the style of your movie, honestly. Yeah. And one last question here comes in from Bo the Buddha, who says, Dear Lords of Amazing YouTube Content, your friendly Balkan resident here, and I am back with the following question. While catching up on fun video game-related articles, I came across one where a person had managed to beat Dark Souls 3 using nothing more than his feet. Uh, I'm sure you've mentioned this bit of news in the podcast, but the article kindled my question. What kindled. would... <laughs> What would your ideal gaming peripheral be that you would gladly uh, place next to your gaming controller of choice? Could be an existing one or one that you would love to be made. Uh, I, for one, would love to have a working minority report glove that you wear and navigate virtual space or your menus. I know that the HTC Vive and other VR headsets have uh, these remotes, uh, but I want to see actual gloves that you put on to interact with your entertainment of choice. Thanks for answering my question. Your ever faithful Balkan follower, Bo the Buddha. You think of anything, John? Mm. <laughs> I just I like the fact that he wants a power glove. Yeah. Have you seen the peripherals that they have for those VR gloves? Yeah, I've seen some of them. They have like a uh, an arm that attaches yeah. to each finger so that you can. You can basically stop your fingers from moving forward so it can simulate touching a thing. Yeah. There's also ones that have like a, a haptic feedback device that they've talked about of yeah. that makes it feel like you're actually touching a thing. That would be really incredible is if yeah. you could put on a glove and then, you know, like just if you could put on a glove and pick up a virtual like gun, right? Yeah. And then it felt like you were actually holding like maybe it didn't have to have weight, but if it just had resistance that would be cool. Uh, you have a whole rumble pack in your glove, and you could just bang and then bang and then bang. Um, I also think that it's about time. Uh, how long it's been since Sony put the two analog sticks on the original DualShock controller yeah. on the PlayStation One? We have frozen controller tech. Uh, all the controllers are pretty much that exact same design. We with added, the exception of a few others, but yeah, for the most part, yeah. We added, you know, we added the PlayStation or the the home button, right? Yeah. And the PlayStation one has the touchpad, but that's just basically another two buttons that are there. Yeah. Um, the curved triggers are good, but I think that it's about time to. I mean, to that's, deal with I mean, then this. you have the Steam controller, which yeah, is I trying to reinvent that. I don't know if I have anything else. Uh, I don't know if I have anything else. Well, I don't. I don't know if there's if I have any interest in actually using that Steam controller. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's about time to either add some more buttons or take a look at this controller design and think about it in a way of what else would you add to this? We've tried speaker. That doesn't really do anything. We're trying putting a light on it. That's kind of stupid. But I think that, like, um, it's an elegant setup that we have right now, but that maybe if you're holding it, uh, adding some more buttons i do like the fact that the uh, oculus controller has a a grip simulator on it you know that i almost think that i would like to see some interesting stuff taken where you cut this standard controller in half and give it two sides of it um and I've, then i've seen that yeah the, uh, that's the way oculus has their yeah. wands right 
Um, Because then you could maybe do some motion stuff with it, but then still keep your traditional controller layout without ha- so that w- what would be great is being able to have something that operated like a Wii remote but without sacrificing any of yeah. the well it's like well, I I want to say I've seen something or I heard something where it's essentially the PlayStation 4 controller and it essentially breaks, breaks in the apart. middle mm-hmm. and then like allows you to have like the Wii U uh the Wii remote control kind of thing and then could reconnect back to be just a regular controller if you wanted to have that experience. Well, one of the things that I found really interesting when I was playing, uh, when I was well, actually this was a while back when I was playing with PlayStation Move controller, I guess, yeah. was there was a few games where you would actually hold because when you think about it, um, you can actually when you think about what you use the left side of your hand on the controller for, if you were to make just a controller that was one analog stick, the D pad, and then the L one and R L two buttons that yeah. was all by itself weighted for your hand, yeah. right? Then you could work at putting something in your right hand that was new or different, right? Cause you still have, this is our primary move controller yeah. for first person shooters and third person action games and things like that. So if you did that, but then you put a different peripheral in your right hand, I think that that really would be interesting is splitting your two hands apart instead of having this one unified thing and then having a glove, of course, where you can feel like you're, you know. Well, I mean, that's what Nintendo tried to do with the Wii mode and the nunchuck for it. Right. So. But I guess the thing is that I feel, I feel like that would have worked better if the nunchuck was more. The nunchuck never felt real good in my hand. Oh, no, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, you're absolutely 100 percent right. That's totally the Wii and nunchuck setup. Um, but I guess nobody, I just never felt like they did anything really super interesting. I, I felt like the, the, I do agree with what you're kind of hinting at is that the, the nunchuck always felt very cheap, yeah, plasticky and lightweight. It's too light, too yeah. light. Also the, having the rope, having the cord between the two, the rope, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> having the cord between the two of them was a little awkward. And then I never really liked the way that the Wiimote felt when you pointed it at the TV because you're, you're really pushing your your um your wrist down yeah. in an uncomfortable fashion like if you had something that was more gun shaped where you were pointing it at the tv and it was more like a gun i feel like that could be more interesting anyway i don't know i just feel like somebody needs to get on add some more buttons to this bullshit because you know it's not as it's, well it's like if you also look at a lot of games you don't use a lot the face buttons all that much anymore. oh yeah yeah in most usually, games anymore yeah I don't know. I mean, like in fighting games, you do, and like games, like games where you're actually like fighting, but like in shooters, you're using the other analog stick and the triggers. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Maybe a third analog stick or a second. You button. mean like a Nintendo 64 controller? Yeah, no. Or a GameCube controller? No. I take it all back. Take it all back. Because uh, every time you, you yeah. suggest something, it's just, an, it's just a different yep. version of a Nintendo controller. All right, Bo the Buddha, that's it. I have no answer to your question. I thought I did. I do not. Uh, Jeff thanks. loves Nintendo. I love Nintendo. <laughs> thanks, everybody, for writing in. Uh, thanks to everybody for, um, uh, yeah, for your questions. Um, mail at RageSite.com is the email address. Uh, John... Let's finish this up. I'm going to go um, maybe like an iPad, but it has a controller built into it. Is that a Nintendo thing? Yes, it's a Wii U. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs>